It's picked up at the five by Sanders. And he is out of bounds at the 22-yard line. Izell Jenkins made the play. Ricky Sanders having an outstanding year at wide receiver. All of the receivers are for the Redskins. Mark Rippon gets the call at quarterback and will for the rest of the season. The Philadelphia defensive line, Joe Gibbs says it may be the best in the league. Reggie White, Mike Pitts, Jerome Brown, and Clyde Simmons. Joyner, Reichenbach, and Bell are the linebackers. Young, Allen Waters, and Hopkins are the safety. First down on the 22-yard line. Defending. Along with Rippon in the backfield for the Redskins, Jamie Morris, the rookie running back, Terry Orr replaces Craig McEwen at H back. Art Monk and Gary Clark are the wide receivers, and the tight end is Don Warren. Up front, it's Jim Lachey. Russ Grimm, Raleigh McKenzie is at center today for Jeff Bostick, Mark May, and Joe Jacoby on the right side. Second down and 10. Redskins go with three wide receivers. up maybe a yard or two. Seth Joyner making the tackle for the Philadelphia Eagles. There's Reggie White who has had a tremendous year and leads the NFL with 14 sacks. He's really the most dominant uh, football player on the defensive side of the ball probably in the entire NFL. Just had an outstanding year to go with his outstanding year of last year to go with his outstanding career. You want to talk about firepower. The Eagles have three or four players that are really outstanding. Mike Oliphant, a rookie from Puget Sound is in there now on third down and eight at the 24. Rippon stumbled going back, and his pass is caught by Gary Clark. He's going to get more, and Clark is tackled at the 40-yard line, good for the first down in a gain of 16. Eric Allen, the rookie, on the tackle. Very windy on the field today, and uh, the Redskins quarterbacks, both Rippon and Williams, have the arm that's strong enough to battle this win. Rippon's biggest problem is just getting away from center, but you can see the strength that he has in just rifling that ball right on the money to Gary Clark. Mark Rippon told us yesterday you can forget about stats. He's third-rated passer in the conference. I'll be judged on the victories. First and 10 at the 40 for the Redskins, their own fourth. Jamie Morris off the left side. Driven back by Clyde Simmons. Maybe a yard. Seth Joyner also in on the play. There's Jamie Morris, who made his debut last week and gained 74 yards against the Browns. Yeah, and with uh, Kelvin Bryant probably out for the year, Jamie Morris is really getting a chance to prove to Joe Gibbs and the coaching staff that he could be the number one tailback for the Skins. Joe Gibbs started the year with Timmy Smith at running back. He's been a big disappointment. Then Kelvin Bryant got hurt after his five or six games, and now Morris gets the call. Second and nine on the 41. They go to Morris again. Morris showing some power. Picks up a couple of more yards to the 44-yard line. Waters on the stop will bring up third down. Morris leaves the game, and Oliphant checks in for the Redskins. Interesting situation with the uh, Redskins offensive line uh, all year. They've had troubles there, but I'm talking to Jim Lachey before the game. He's glad to be back home, as he calls it, at that left tackle side. You see that running the ball behind Lachey early in this one. Third down and seven at the 43 for the Redskins. Griffin has time, and the pass is knocked down. It was intended for Art Monk and Eric Allen, who's having a terrific year. Rookie out of Arizona State made the play and prevented the first down for Washington. Rippon's throwing right into the wind, and when you have a strong wind here, you cannot finesse the ball. You've got to really rifle it. He does that, but what happens when you're rifling it, you lose some of your accuracy. You, uh, you have to be right on the money. That time, Allen was there to make the play. It is fourth down, and Greg Coleman, who is the third Redskin punter this season, will be kicking. And going back deep is Mark Konechny for the Eagles. 
Dawson so Nickney's longest punt return 24 year, yards this season. It is a short kick. Bounces at the 30, and the Eagles will let it roll as the Redskins will down it at the 27 yard line. Kurt Govea, a 30 yard kick, and so the Philadelphia Eagles will go on offense for the first time here at cold and bright and sunny Veterans Stadium. Randall Cunningham has developed into a most dangerous weapon for the Philadelphia Eagles, one of the most dangerous in the league, and it'll be up to the Redskin defense to short-circuit him today. Their defensive line, Charles Mann, Dave Butts, Darrell Grant, and Dexter Manley. The linebacking four, Mel Kaufman, Neil Olkowitz, and Wilbur Marshall, and in the secondary, it's Barry Wilburn and Darrell Green at cornerback, Alvin Walton and Todd Bowles at safety. First down for the Eagles on their own 28. Is starting three wide receivers in there for the Eagles. Cunningham, this is what drives the Redskins crazy. Cunningham's ability to run, and he's close to first down yardage. Kaufman and Walton bring them down. The Redskins' pass rush is one that's very straight. They'll let their uh, defensive ends rush up the field, and uh, there you see Manley, 72. What happens here is it leaves a hole if they don't get enough pressure from Butts and Grant, and that hole is where. Uh, Randall Cunningham has been most dangerous. Very unusual to see a quarterback uh, uh, going for that extra yard, not hitting the turf there, but he is a very unusual player. He's had a great career against the Redskins, and his two longest career runs have come against Washington. It is good enough for a first down for Philadelphia. So the extra dimension that Randall Cunningham gives the team was evident on that play. We'll be watching this very important other NFC East battle as the Giants lead the Phoenix Cardinals 3 to nothing in the first quarter at Giants Stadium. First down at the 38 for Philadelphia. The Eagles were beaten by the Redskins in their previous meeting, 17 to 10, on the third weekend at RFK Stadium. Anthony Tony stopped cold by the Redskins defense, led by Charles Mann. The offense for Philadelphia. Cunningham has in the backfield Keith Byers and Anthony Tony. There is the offensive line of Matt Darwin, David Alexander, Dave Remington, Ron Baker, and Ron Heller, and the backs and receivers, including Mike Quick in there for the first time after missing eight games with a broken leg. Interesting to see how long Quick can play coming off that broken leg. He's been a bit sore, he told us. Second down and nine on the 39. Play fake. Cunningham is going deep for quick, and the pass is almost intercepted by Bowles. He had it and lost it. And a penalty marker is down. And it may go against the Redskins. The referee is Ben Dreif. Darrell Green right in there pleading his case, as is Bowles. This is kind of the way it's gone for them. Pass to the first, number 28. It's a first down. You know, there's no way that Darrell Green was even going to get close to intercepting this ball, but uh, this is one thing that Ted Plum told us he wanted to do early, is to test Darrell Green with maybe a double move type of route. This time, Cunningham makes a very bad mistake in putting this ball up for grabs. Bowles comes over, should have made the catch. And I'm not sure if that's a very good call, uh, considering where the ball was in relationship to the receiver. It's a 28-yard penalty, but it was not a catchable ball for Mike Quick. Darrell Green, who has not been 100%, and the secondary has not played 100% for the Redskins this year, and that's a first down for the Eagles on the Washington 33. And Cunningham's pass is caught by Mike Quick, and he's getting Mike Quick back into the rhythm in a hurry. Well, because you don't know how long he's going to play, you might as well use him early while he's still fresh. Quick is just running a simple uh, hook pattern this time against Darrell Green. Good protection. There he is in the little hole in the zone, and he makes the grab. But it's very important and very smart by the Eagles of using Quick early before he does fatigue that uh, re recovering left leg. It is a first down for the Eagles, helped by a 28-yard penalty by Darrell Green, a pass interference call. So the Eagles with a first down on the Redskin 23. Nine and a half minutes remaining in the first quarter. Michael Haddix in the backfield, penalty marker down as Keith fires. Goes around right in and gets good yardage inside the 15.
Todd Bowles knocked him out of bounds, but a marker is down and also shaken up is Dexter Manley for the Redskins. Uh, this would be a tremendous blow to the Redskins. This is a position, the defensive end position, where they've had troubles all year long with injuries and assorted other problems. And if Manley cannot return, uh, they're really hurting. Motion on the offense, two men moving at the same time. Five-yard penalty, first down. It's against the Eagles, but Manley looks like he is in pain. Here's Dexter on the left side of the screen, number 72. And we'll see exactly how he is injured. Cuts his, they get, his legs are cut out from underneath him. It didn't look like his leg got cut in the turf at all. And I would expect him to return. Dexter Manley, who's finally healthy and leads the Redskins with 10 quarterback sacks, is on the sideline. Raven Caldwell, a linebacker, has come in. And the Redskins are going with a three-man defensive line on first and 15 following the Eagles' penalty back to the 28 of Washington. Cunningham with a quick toss to Byers. And Byers back close to the original line of scrimmage. Wilbur Marshall and Neil Okowitz making the stop. Unusual that Okowitz is in there in a nickel situation. Well, with the injury to, to Manley, they're really scrambling now, uh, shuffling their papers on the sidelines, trying to figure out exactly what combination of players they want in the game. The real plus that they have, though, is Wilbur Marshall. He can step up and play that defensive end spot for uh, Manley. And uh, with Caldwell in the game, he can substitute for Marshall at the weak side linebacker. Second down and 10 at the 23-yard line. No score, first quarter. Half the field bathed in sunshine. Cunningham going all the way to the end zone incomplete. Mike Quick was covered well by Darrell Green that time, and that wasn't even close, and it'll bring up third down. Cunningham recognized that Darrell Green had excellent coverage on Quick, and he did throw that ball away. You saw Dean Hamill, a defensive lineman, Steve Hamilton, and Clarence Vaughn come in as another nickel package enters the game for Richie Pettibone, the defensive coordinator for the Redskins. It'll be third down and ten. Well, for the rest of the season, we'll see a lot of different players uh, in that Redskin lineup, not be just because they're young, but because they're running out of other players. Ron Johnson, who had started until Quick came back, is in there, three wide outs. Cunningham hangs in the pocket, and his pass is overthrown out of the end zone. Chris Carter was the closest man to it, but the Redskins had a bunch of guys in burgundy jerseys just in case. Another good job of recognizing that he didn't have anything down the field. Cunningham threw it wisely through the back of the end zone and allows Zendejas now to kick a field goal in good position. He's had a great year for the Eagles. He has connected on 14 of 17 since he has joined Philadelphia. This will be a 40-yard attempt. Zendejas to kick against the Redskins this year has given Philadelphia an early 3 to nothing lead. A 40-yard field goal by Luis Zendejas has been the only score thus far as the Eagles lead the Redskins 3 to nothing. The big play in that drive was a pass interference by Darrell Green that cost the Redskins 28 yards and put the Eagles into position. And Dejas now will be kicking off. Ricky Sanders is back deep for the Redskins. Redskins have won six and lost seven. They have not had a losing year since 1980, and they're trying to break a three-game losing streak. High and end over end, and it'll be Sanders at the four. Sanders finds a hole off the right side and brings it out smartly to the 35-yard line. Michael Haddock's on the tackle, and a penalty marker has been thrown back at about the 15. Well, this will really back them up. They had a chance to have great field position, and now they'll be deep inside their own territory. Number 59, illegal block. Ten yards, first down. That's Dave Harbour, illegal block, and what has been a big nemesis for Joe Gibbs this year has been the special team, something he has always taken pride in. They have really just flat out not done it for him this year. 
and a lot of crazy things have happened. He's gone through three or four punters. He's had three or four punt return guys. And how do you figure that uh, that position would be, uh, or those two positions would be one that would be subject to so many injuries? So they'll move it back to the 10-yard line. So good field position turns into bad for Mark Griffin. With six minutes and 12 seconds to go in the first quarter. Make it 8-12. Griffin pumps once, going deep, wide open is Clark, and it's overthrown. He had beaten the defenders by at least five yards and would have had a big chunk of real estate for the Redskins had the ball been there. This is really a well-designed play. It was just a simple out and up by Clark. Griffin gave Clark a great pump. That froze Eric Allen in his tracks. And this ball was complete. It was an easy touchdown for the Redskins. Clark was a good five to ten yards behind Allen when he realized uh, that that ball was sailing out of bounds. Word on Dexter Manley, he has a badly sprained knee, and it's questionable as to whether he'll return. For the Eagles or the Redskins at second and ten. Griffin. And up the middle is Terry Orr. And Terry Orr, the H back. Big yardage has a first down plus up to the 37 yard line. 28 yard pickup. Todd Bell and Andre Waters on the stop for Terry Orr. Terry Orr is in motion here, number 87. He's going to come down the field and just break on his post pattern. And uh, he gets behind the linebacker. Orr showing a lot of good speed after he makes this grab, pulling away from Todd Bell, a former strong safety with the Chicago Bears. And uh, this is just Orr's sixth catch of the year. First down on the 38 of the Redskins, who trail three to nothing. Griffin going for Art Monk. And it was tipped. Roynell Young got a hand on it. Andre Waters was covering. H-back has been one of the positions that have not been effective for the Redskins. It'll be important what Terry Orr shows today. Well, the wind had a little bit to play on this incompletion. Roynell Young will do a nice job of laying out and tipping this ball away at the last second but I got to think that throwing right into the teeth of the wind as uh, Griffin is that uh, he's, his accuracy is going to be affected. Second down and ten. Griffin in and out of the hands of Terry Orr. And right now, for an NFL Today report, let's check in with Brent Musburger in New York. Brent? Dick, here's what's going on around the league. Phil Simms wearing gloves today, not bothered. He's moving the Giants. This one to Robinson, 15 yards. They're up there by 10 points on the Cardinals. Meanwhile, Cincinnati is banging them with a touchdown. Icky Woods again, but they missed the extra point. 6-3 Bengals back to deck. All right, Brent, thank you. So the Giants with a 10-0 lead over the Cardinals. The Eagles need a win to stay even with them. They have the tie break. Edge is a result of two regular season victories. Third down and 10 for the Redskins. Griffin drills it, and it's caught this time by Clark into Eagle territory in a first down. But there's another penalty marker down and around the line of scrimmage. 19-yard pickup. Waters on the stop. But there's a flag down. The Redskins are saying it's against the Eagles. And it is. Illegal use of the hands, probably a blow to the head. It's a, uh, the old bell ringer head slap, as the defense linemen like Number to do to the... six on the defense. Hands of the face slap. They declare the penalty as first down. It was Clyde Simmons, number 96. The Skins offensive line has given Rippon a lot of time to throw. He hasn't been bothered at all. He gets back in his rhythm and lets it go. And in the middle of the zone defense there is Gary Clark right over the ball. So the Redskins are in Eagle territory for the first time. All five of their plays on this drive have been through the air. And the first running play, and Jamie Morris snaps off right tackle. Jamie Morris gets inside the 20. Todd Bell caught him from behind. Andre Waters had missed a tackle, and you saw the speed of the rookie from Michigan, Jamie Morris, as he gets 26 big yards for the Redskins. This was a most effective play for the Redskins the last time they played the Eagles. The counter tray. Grimm is out in front. There's Lachey. Big hole. And once Morris gets into the secondary, he makes Andre Waters miss, and he's got himself a nice game. He's listed, you know, as 180 pounds, but he really is closer to 195. First down on the 
14 for the Redskins who trail three to nothing. On the delay, Morris doesn't get much, and Seth Joyner was in on the play. Joyner has played terrific football for the Philadelphia Eagles. They talk a lot about Reggie White, but Joyner, who's the only linebacker in on, on the nickel for Philadelphia, has had a fine year. Well, Seth Joyner really has been their outstanding linebacker. That is a position that they haven't really got enough production out of. Very few sacks and very few interceptions have come from their linebacking core, but as you said, Dick, uh, with uh, three interceptions, Seth Joyner is having a good year. Second down and eight. The Eagles 16. Pressure on Rippon. And wide open for the touchdown is Ricky Sanders. And the Redskins take the lead. A 16-yard touchdown pass. Rippon withstood the pressure by Todd Bell and wide open in the end zone was Sanders for his 10th touchdown reception. He leads the NFL in that department. You gotta wonder how a quarterback can get away from a linebacker. Well, it's simple if that linebacker only weighs 210 pounds as Todd Bell does. <laughs> you got big old Mark Rippon there at 240. He pulls away easily. The other question I gotta wonder is who's covering Ricky Sanders? Good job by Rippon to avoid the sack and throw the touchdown. Chip Lowmiller with the conversion and the kick is good. Low Miller has just missed one extra point this year. So the Washington Redskins show that they're not going to play dead in this one. They lead the Eagles 7-3. Well, the big news for Buddy Ryan this week was Ted Plum coming to his assistance to execute the Heimlich maneuver when a piece of pork chop got caught in his mouth. It looks like Buddy's still putting some other things in his <laughs> mouth here. He's not worried about the stick of gum right there. Here's the kickoff, Low Miller. As the Redskins lead, Walter Abercrombie is back with Konechny, and it's going to be Mark Konechny on the return. And Konechny carries it out just beyond the 25-yard line, and that's where the Eagles will take over. Let's take a look at the replay one more time. I want you to notice two things. This is Todd Bell. He's got a free run at the quarterback, and then in the middle of the field, you don't see any safeties. Rippon does a nice job of pulling away from Bell after the play fake and noticing that there's nobody there, and he can just loft the ball to Sanders without any coverage. Roynell Young was beaten on the cover. Well, one of the problems the Redskins have not suffered this year was within their wide receivers. They've had fine years. There's the scoring drive. The Eagles with a first down on their 26-yard line. 5-13 remaining in the first quarter. Cunningham up the middle to Keith Jackson in the Redskin territory. What a year for Keith Jackson, who needs 12 receptions to break the rookie mark set by Earl Cooper in 1980. Cunningham notices the two-deep coverage here. Number 52, Olkowitz, has Jackson all the way down the middle of the field. This is a wonderful throw and catch, but one of the reasons that Cunningham had the time to throw is the work of Ron Heller on Charles Mann here. And a nice little help there also from Keith Byers. When you got a guy like Mann, you got to give your offensive lineman some help. 27-yard game, Dan, and a first down for the Eagles in Redskin territory. Byers wide open out of the backfield, gets another first down for Philadelphia. That's good for 15 yards. Byers having a big year. Both quarterbacks are getting great protection from their offensive lines. And this, should, this could be a wide open game if they don't start putting more pressure on them. Byers is one of the better backs coming out of the backfield on a little out option routes. And uh, he's just beats the zone coverage there, picks up the first down. Bell Kaufman on the tackle. He's starting for Monty Coleman this week. The Eagles with a first down on the Redskins 32. Just under four minutes remaining in the first quarter. to the 30 and picks up a couple Steve Hamilton making the stop the Redskins now going with a four-man line again Hamilton has replaced the injured Manley who suffered a bruised knee sprained knee actually so Hamilton Mann, Butts and Grant are the front four for the Redskins the Eagles with an eight and five record that's their best record at this stage of a race since Vic Vermeil's Big year in 1981. Second down and eight, Philadelphia on the Redskins 30. And on a great fake by Cunningham, he'll get the first down as he runs for it. 
to the 21 yard line. Todd Bowles that time. A big tall guy with long legs. It doesn't look like you're moving very fast. Cunningham is very very smooth but he has great acceleration when he needs it most. He may be one of the most dangerous open field runners in the entire league. We're at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia and an enthusiastic sellout crowd as the Washington Redskins lead the Philadelphia Eagles seven to three with that much time remaining in the first quarter. But the Eagles are driving. They have a first down on the Redskins 21. and Mel Kaufman on the stop. That'll bring up third down for the Eagles who have not had an effective running game this year. Randall Cunningham is their leading rusher at 500 yards coming in. Very nice competition though also between Tony and his quarterback. Uh, Randall came into the game leading uh, as a leading rusher and uh, he's always telling Tony uh, exactly the difference in the two of them. And Tony is starting to get to him a little bit. It is second down, second down and six for Philadelphia. Cunningham flushed out of the pocket. Flips one to Mike Quick. He stayed in bounds, and it'll be another Philadelphia first down. Well, this is just a tremendous lift for the Eagles and the Eagle fans. You've heard the reception they gave Mike Quick. Nice touch throw and a wonderful one-handed grab. Barry Wilburn knocked him out of bounds, but not before the Eagles pick up another first down. It'll be first and goal at the seventh. Jimmy Giles has replaced Keith Jackson at tight end for the Eagles. Quick reminds me of Paul Warfield, the way he can make that grab and run with the ball after the catch. Fires in motion. Cunningham loses the ball. It's a fumble. And the Redskins have recovered. Neil Olkowitz. Big play by the Redskins defense. Raven Caldwell with tremendous pressure on Randall Cunningham. He coughs it up. And the Washington Redskins, who have the lead, will now have the ball once again. This is rare for the Eagles not to score once they get inside the 20-yard line. But Caldwell comes free on the blitz. And then he just punches the ball out with his left hand. Too bad that uh, Olkowitz couldn't have got a bigger bounce or he might have picked that one up and gone in. But here's Caldwell, number 50, from the right side of the screen, coming free as uh, Darwin's a little late on the pickup, and the Skins are in great shape. And one of the things the Redskins have not been getting this year have been turnovers by the defense, and they got a big one there. So Washington with the ball, first down and 10 on their own 37-yard line, leading 7-3. to three. Play fake by Ripon. Up the middle, Ricky Sanders makes the catch in Eagle territory. Frizzell making the stop and a gain of 20 to Sanders. Well, last week, the Cleveland Browns did a nice job of changing up their defense by playing a lot more zone than uh, the Skins expected. Well, here the Eagles are in a zone coverage, and Ricky Sanders just outruns the underneath coverage before the safety. Frizzell can get to him. And he's wide open. But again, great pass protection for the quarterback. And as a result of that, Mark Griffin has averaged 20 yards per completion thus far in this week. First down, Redskins on the Eagle 43. Jamie Morris with a fine run up the middle and another Washington first down inside the 30. That was good for 14 yards. The safeties, Wes Hopkins and Andre Waters brought Morris down finally. One of the problems the Redskins have had all year is establishing a consistent running game once uh, Kelvin Bryant has been injured. Uh, they're averaging less than 100 yards per game. Jamie Morris is going to do better than that maybe in this first half. Final seconds of the first quarter. Redskins with a big defensive play and the only touchdown. Morris dives forward and he'll get to the 26-yard line and that will be the last play of the first quarter. Clyde Simmons makes the stop. So it's a game the Eagles need. They're in command in the race. But the Redskins lead here 7-3. to three. This is Dick Stockton along with Dan Fouts here at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. Keith Jackson has a sprained left ankle. 
The word is he'll probably come back for the Eagles, and they'll need him. He has been a very big factor, particularly since Mike Quick went out, as Randall Cunningham really diversified the attack. But the Redskins have the ball, and they have a first down on the Eagle 26. another 14-yard pickup. He's made some big catches so far, Clark. Well, Clark is working against uh, Eric Allen, the rookie, on just a simple slant pattern. Rippin does a nice job of throwing the ball hard, a little bit behind him, but Gary Clark is really one of the toughest receivers in the league. He's going to make that grab nine times out of ten. He has caught three passes for 49 yards thus far. Allen on the stop. First down, Jamie Morris goes nowhere. Redskin offensive line on the right side couldn't dent the Eagle defense. Jerome Brown and the free safety Wes Hopkins in on the play. You see that type of play and you wonder what would have happened if the Redskins had a big back like they used to have with Riggins and George Rogers. It used to seem like uh, once that load of uh, the 240 pounds of those guys would meet behind Jacoby and those big fellas up front that they would almost automatically get four or five yards. They're not getting it with these little backs like Morris and Timmy Smith. And Mike Olafan is in on second down and nine. Ripping again with a lot of time, and it's caught by Art Monk. Down to the five-yard line. It'll be third down and about two and a half. Mike Reichenbach, the middle linebacker. And now Todd Bell has to be moved away. Let's take a look at Reggie White working against Joe Jacoby here. 92 against 66. Reggie has had just an outstanding year. Look, at they're going to give him a lot of attention. Donnie Warren's making sure he doesn't get anywhere near that quarterback. That was just a one half of the field type of pass pattern. That ball is either going to go to Oliphant on his option route or to Hart Monk. Third down and four at the six for the Redskins. On a design sprint, the pass by Rippon is intercepted. Wes Hopkins. Interception in the end zone. So both teams have caused two big turnovers. There's a penalty marker down, and it appears to be against the Redskins. This is a mistake by Rippon. He's going to sprint out to the right side here and look for one of two receivers, either Gary Clark deep in the end zone or Donnie Warren short, and uh, there's just too many people to try to get this one in. Hopkins' third interception of the season, and there is the disappointment on the face of Mark Griffin. The Eagles now, with 26 interceptions this year, are second to the Minnesota Vikings in the NFL. So Philadelphia gets the ball back, trailing the Redskins, 7 to 3. First down on the 20. Randall Cunningham on first down. Incomplete, the pass intended for Keith Jackson, who's back in action. Alvin Walton, the strong safety cover. You wonder how the Eagles can be in a situation where they're leading the NFC East. When you look at the team defensive statistics, they're the worst statistic team in the NFL as far as their defense is concerned. Well, you got to look at those turnovers. They're number two in the league in, in that turnover takeaway ratio. On a cold day, how can you say the word statistics so many times without making a mistake? I wouldn't try that. I'm not going to try it again, I guarantee you. <laughs> stats. Good boy, you're in stats. Second down, 10 for the Eagles. Cunningham has Tony out of the backfield. Tony is stopped at the 30, may have enough for the first down. Wilbur Marshall had him in the grass. Check on scores from around the league. Giants still lead the Phoenix Cardinals 10 to nothing. Cincinnati looking to lock up at least a wild card berth, a home wild card berth with a win. As we're here in the 14th week of the season and things are getting awfully close around the league. Boy, Cleveland looks like a good ball club. They blew the Eagles out earlier in the year 19 to 3, and of course they really uh, slammed the door on the Redskins last week at RFK. They're coming on when you need to come on late in the season. Eagles with a first down. Keith Byers chased by Hoffman. Picked up a couple of extra yards. Marshall knocked him out of bounds, but great hustle by Keith Byers. He got around Walton, who missed another tackle. Walton missed a few against the Browns last week. 
Well, it's not easy to bring down a guy 240 pounds. Byers is really an effective runner when he gets out to the outside and can build up some momentum. When you add that momentum with 240 pounds, uh, you know, mathematically, you got something big there, and it's tough to bring down. Byers went into the game. Second to Roger Craig in catches by running backs. Cunningham with a second down and one on his 39. Cunningham is going deep for Mike Quick. And it was thrown deep from behind him. Crowd looking for a flag, but the ball wasn't catchable anyway. Darrell Green and Alvin Walton were downfield with Quick. Well, one thing the crowd is reacting to is Alvin Walton's pop that he gave Mike Quick. Rock on the offense, number 50. was Dave Remington with an illegal block. Forget about the possible pass interference, and that'll be a flag against the Philadelphia Eagles. Let's take a look at uh, Remington right in the middle of the screen, number 50. And any time a defensive lineman is engaged with another offensive lineman, you cannot block him below the legs like this. Remington, it goes low with his right arm and uh, hooks the defensive lineman and brings him down. But this is what the crowd reacted to. Watch uh, Alvin Walton come over after the ball goes away, and he just lays Mike Quick out. Walton a little frustrated he couldn't bring down big Keith Byers. He's taking it out on a little bit lighter target there. Second down and 16 now for the Eagles following the penalty. Raven Caldwell moved. The flag is down. Cunningham on the run. Cunningham would have the, and another penalty marker now is thrown down deep in the secondary. Wilbur Marshall chased Cunningham out of bounds. He got 18 yards on it, but there are two flags down. Well, there's no love lost between these two ball clubs, and we're seeing a lot of uh, extracurricular activity today. The great thing that Cunningham did on this play, Dick, he knew it was a free play. He knew he drove, uh, drove he brought... <laughs> Caldwell offside. He knew he had a free one. And then when he got to the outside, he picked up a bit of a, uh, a picket line behind uh, Keith Jackson and uh, Chris Carter. See if there's a personal foul tacked on as well. Here's Raven Caldwell without the helmet. 88 on the right is pushing. We're going to play. Jackson. Everybody's upset, and Randall Cunningham is tired. <laughs> he ran around about 30 yards there, and now he has to do it all over again. Hard to believe that Randall Cunningham was the 37th pick in the draft, and whenever we've talked to coaches playing the Philadelphia Eagles, the only name they really ever mention is Randall Cunningham and what to do about him. If he's not the most valuable player in this league, I don't know who should be. Second down and 16, an end zone look at this play coming up. Cunningham is sacked by Caldwell. Now Caldwell, with a vengeance, came strong on that play after going off sides and encroaching on the last play, and he got Cunningham for the 53rd sack against Randall this year. He's really taking the most of his opportunities. This is the second time he's made a play on Cunningham, forcing the fumble the first time, and here he beats Anthony Tony on the pass rush and brings Cunningham down. Caldwell with the sack. That is the first sack of the game, a loss of four yards. A couple of years ago, Cunningham was sacked over 70 times, so... He has been the victim despite his ability to get away from danger. It'll be third down and 20 for the Eagles. Cunningham has gone deep for Chris Carter, and Carter has the pass intercepted by Wilburn. And Wilburn is stopped by Carter on the return. But another turnover. And the second turnover by the Redskins gives them the ball again. This turnover isn't that bad, though, Dick. This is a long, long pass, and uh, it's the, that old saying, it's as good as a punt. In fact, this might be a better uh, than a punt because uh, he threw it about 70 yards, and the return was only about 10. Still 7-3 Washington. They'll come back with the ball. You see where Washington has the yardage edge over Philadelphia, but both teams have missed some golden opportunities. 
Mark Griffin did not miss Ricky Sanders with a 16-yard touchdown, and that's the difference as the Redskins lead it 7-3. First down for the Redskins following an interception on the 38-yard line, their own. Griffin gets away from Pitts, and the pass is intercepted by Seth Joyner. Seth Joyner down the sideline is in for the touchdown. No flag. The fourth interception of the season by linebacker Seth Joyner. And he gets in for the score. But he might have stepped out of bounds, Dick. I think they're going to bring it back. Inside the 20, you're right. Mike Pitts gets great pressure on Rippon, and he forces this interception. Let's see where exactly he steps out of bounds and if he does it all. He looks real good so far. Yeah, he, right about there, he gets pushed out of bounds by Mark May. But good pressure by Mike Pitts. Uh, and now they're saying he didn't go out of bounds, so we should have a review on this to find out exactly what happened. In looking at the replay, it looked as if half of his foot might have stepped out of bounds. But let's take this other view. Bit of a hit there on the quarterback by Reggie White. But here's another look at it. May gets just enough to push him out of bounds. That should be brought back to about the 19-yard yeah, line. I think he's definitely out of bounds. A 40-yard touchdown. They're ruling right at this moment as... They're getting set Zendejas to kick the conversion. And now we're going to have a stoppage of play as they're going to review it, apparently, and Dixon Holman is our replay official today. There's his right foot. That's about the 19-yard uh, line, I believe. Right on the line there. Very easy to see. Good play by Mark May. Save the touchdown. But an interception by Seth Joyner. And the Eagles will have the ball in any event. It'll either be a touchdown and a score. Well, this is a replay booth. They've got one television here. They've got another television here. And a, uh, a couple of tape machines in there. Let me show you where there's a television there. And there's another one. <laughs> and there's a tape machine. And, and they've got a little guy here that's working these machines. And they've got a guy here and another guy. And they're all looking to see exactly what happened now maybe there's no one behind that screen we don't know for sure well let's identify them so, so that uh, <laughs> their families know at least that they're working huh? there's no question in my mind that this ball is uh, should be marked uh, out of bounds and not a touchdown but nonetheless the important thing is that the eagles created another turnover they lead uh, they're right up there among the leaders this is their 27th interception of the year which coming into the game put him in second well the Minnesota Vikings lead and that's why the Vikings look like they'll be a threat when postseason time comes around the Eagles are really a pressure football team they, they have a pressure offense with a great quarterback and the great passing attack but their defense although it has given up a lot of yards all year long has really been one that has forced the action uh, and has created a lot of turnovers you can see that uh, Reggie White walks away. The news doesn't seem to be good for the Eagles. Ben Bright will give us the call. They have reversed the call and ruled that Seth Joyner stepped out of bounds at the 19. Ben Bright will give the news. Review, he stepped out of bounds on a 19 yard. great benefits of having instant replay you hear a lot of complaints about it but this is obviously not a touchdown and it's a good call and a gutty call in reversing it here in Philadelphia we have already had four turnovers and now the Eagles who trail seven to three have a first down at the Redskin 19 Michael Haddix and Byers are the setbacks Cunningham will throw and it's incomplete Keith Jackson sandwiched by two Redskin defenders Alvin Walton and Mel Kaufman. Jackson's playing on a tender ankle. I tell you what, I bet he's got a sore back now after this hit. Alvin Walton's known as the hit man, and he uh, put his trademark on the back of Keith Jackson. 
Joe Gibbs said, how will the Redskins come out in this game? They have flickering playoff hopes, practically none. And he said he would learn a lot about a lot of people in these final three games of the season. Second down and 10 Eagles. the first down yardage he needed to get to the nine maybe short of it Alvin Walton on the tackle Eagles have had phenomenal success scoring once they've gotten inside the 20 yard line they're 29 out of 30 now and it's almost a lock especially when you look at the way that uh, Luis Sendejas has been kicking field goals for them interestingly enough Dan in their first meeting of the year at RFK Stadium the Eagles came up empty. They were 0 for 5 when they got inside the skin 20. Yeah, they blamed it all on that kicker they used to have. They could make it. It's history now. Third down and one. And let's see whether the Eagles threw the Redskins offside or vice versa. Well, There's going to be a lot of finger pointing first, so. <laughs> There's only one finger that's going to count on this one, though. see exactly the contact on the center but it's really good he, what you do see is Randall Cunningham kind of flinching a little bit there as he's calling his cadence and that type of reaction is just enough sometimes to bring that defense off sides especially in a third down and short yardage situation where that defensive line is so keyed up to get off on the ball you saw Charles Mann make contact but the ruling was that they got to the center Dave Remington and made contact with him first so the Eagles now with a chance to go ahead, have a first and goal on the Redskin five. Cunningham, Jackson, and a fine open field tackle by Alvin Walton. Walton has missed a few last week and missed one earlier today, but it looks like he's tightened up his game considerably here in the second quarter. This is probably the most difficult play for anybody. It's a one-on-one -on -one play in the open field. Walton, number 40 here, is going to uh, shadow Jackson. Jackson makes the grab, but this is an excellent tackle as that head is in front of the ball carrier, and he brings him down. The Eagles have three tight ends. Second and goal at the two. And the pitch to Byers, and he'll get in for the touchdown. With his fifth touchdown of the season, he has five of the Eagles' 15 touchdowns rushing, and Philadelphia regains the lead. Well, at 240 pounds, that's a lot of meat hitting that offensive line. You see number 63, Ron Baker, come out and lead. There's uh, Michael Haddix knocking out the safety, and that's just uh, too much strength to get in that end zone for the Skins to stop. Luis Andejas out of Telchik's hold. He's been perfect in extra points this year. So Joyner's interception sets up a go-ahead score, and the Eagles now lead the Redskins 10-7. Philadelphia leads it 10-7, and you live by the foot. Sometimes you die by the foot. Watch Barry Wilburn's foot come up and kick Zendejas right in the nose. He'll be the first kicker next week to go out and play with a shield on, I guarantee you. <laughs> and I'm sure Louis said, I never did anything to you, Barry. His beak's a little red, though, isn't it? <laughs> Here's the kickoff. Sanders is deep for the Redskins. It's a short kick, and Sanders, at the 14-yard line, gets by one defender and dives forward beyond the 30-yard line. That'll give the Redskins de decent starting position. Jenkins on the tackle. Well, the Giants against the Phoenix Cardinals at Giants Stadium still lead a 10 to nothing in the second quarter. And the standings right now, the Eagles and the Giants tied for first, and the Cardinals just a game behind. But keep in mind... That by virtue of their two wins, the Eagles have tie-breaking edges over everyone, including the Giants. Next Saturday afternoon at 3.30 Eastern, it's the NFL Today, followed by the Eagles and the Cardinals in Phoenix. First down for the Redskins on their 31-yard line. Jamie Morris, who had 50 yards on the ground prior to that carry, gets a couple. Jerome Brown, Reggie White, and the defensive line made the stop. Interesting that Mark Rippon 
has thrown interceptions on his last two passing attempts. Hopkins and Joyner picked it off, and Joyner's interception led to an eagle score. One led to a score, one prevented a score. Hopkins picked one off in the end zone. Two areas on the field where quarterbacks have got to be more careful in their decisions of throwing the ball. Second down and seven on the Redskins, 34. There's Jamie Morris. And Morris crosses the 35. Todd Bell and Andre Waters in on the stop. Andre Waters and Todd Bell. Morris told us yesterday that the two Redskins who have befriended him the most have been Doug Williams, the quarterback, and Wilbur Marshall, the linebacker. And then we asked him, well, how can a linebacker, why would a <laughs> linebacker want to be friends with a rookie running back? And uh, Jamie said, well, his locker's right across from mine. I guess he had no other choice. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> Third and three for the Redskins. Griffin going for Gary Clark. Eric Allen defending, and that'll bring up fourth down. And Greg Coleman will come in to kick it for the Redskins. Going deep for the Eagles is Mark Konechny. Seven minutes and 24 seconds remaining in the first half. The Eagles lead it 10 to 7. They know that if they win their three remaining games, they'll be NFC East champions. Short kick. Connecty on the 23. Raven Caldwell was the first one down for the Redskins. He got by him. And he gets it up to the 29, a return of seven yards. Following that punt, Harbor made the stop for Washington. We're back at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. This is Dick Stockton and Dan Fouts in an important NFC East battle. The Eagles are in front now 10-7 in what has been a seesaw game. 7-14 remaining in the first half. First and 10, Eagles. They're on their own 29-yard line. a couple Daryl Grant in on the stop you know Dan a lot of fans may not realize uh, they suffer with the teams but what it is to to take losses the Eagles or the Redskins have lost three in a row it's a losing year what really is it like you've been there well as a ball player you lose not only those three games but you're a loser for three whole weeks that's 21 days of your life that you feel just absolutely terrible and, you know they talk about playing for pride and everything they're not playing for pride they're playing just to win a game again to get that uh, label of loser off them what the Redskins are playing for as Byers slants off tackle, brings it out to the 36-yard line. He'll be short of a first down by about three yards. Neil Olkowitz, the middle linebacker, on the stop. The Giants have stretched their lead over the Phoenix Cardinals to 17 to nothing, and that, of course, puts more pressure on the Eagles. Well, that score by the Giants, if it holds up, that would... Uh, put the Redskins out regardless of what they do today. So you got to figure that both the teams we're watching here today are rooting for the team that's got zero. <laughs> that's the best way to put it. Third down and three. Cunningham out of the shotgun. Inside handoff to Byers. Byers has the first down and more. And a big block up front by Ron Baker. Set it all up for Byers. A gain of 21 yards. Wilbur Marshall makes the play. And the Eagles get into Redskin territory again. This is just a simple sweep pattern, uh, sweep play by Byers. He'll, he's going to follow Baker out to the outside, and uh, they really get it rolling here. They get the corner right now as Mann goes down, and there's no support on the outside as the Redskins' defensive backs were in man-to-man -man coverage, had their back to the play. You're the Redskins. You've got to put pressure on the quarterback. Otherwise, the secondary will be in trouble. Good blocking that time for Cunningham. Eagles have a first down on the Washington 43. Pass to Byers. He makes the catch, but is hit immediately and picks up just a couple of yards. Right now, let's check in with Brent Musburger in New York with a late score. Brent? Well, Dick, Phil Sims is having a big day. 8 of 14, 116 yards and two touchdowns, both to Stacey Robinson. And the Giants are putting a licking on the Cardinals right now. 17-0. Back to Dick. All right, Brent. Thank you very much. As we mentioned and told you about next week, the Eagles not only need to win this game, this is their last home game of the season, but they play in Phoenix next Saturday on CBS and close against the Cowboys in Dallas. Second down and seven. 
37. That's the Redskin 40. Here's Byers on the delay. Breaks a tackle, and Byers is close to a first down, maybe short by a yard. Mel Kaufman making the stop. Byers is having an awfully good day. Let's take a look at the remaining schedules of the contenders in the NFC East. The Eagles are on the road the rest of this way. The Giants with two AFC games. One, of course, at Giants Stadium where they play their home games, and the Cardinals are home with Philadelphia and Green Bay. Well, you think you're looking at that schedule right there. I'd have to give the real advantage to the Giants. That uh, away game at, she, at, at not at Shea Stadium, but at Giants Stadium is pretty good plus for Byers. Third and one. They have the first down. He may have, but boy, he took a real lick at the line of scrimmage right at the point of attack. I think he may have got it, though, with his second effort. Wilbur Marshall and Clarence Vaughn in on the stop. They're going to call for the measurement. We have three minutes and 42 seconds remaining in the first half. It's awfully close, and it looks like they're short by the length of a football. So it'll be fourth down. Let's have a listen uh, to this collision at the line of scrimmage. Well, that's just hard plastic meeting hard plastic there. That looked like Daryl Grant with the big stop on Keith Byers. So it is fourth and less than one. And the Eagles, who are 7 for 11 on fourth down conversions this year. Sounds like a lucky number to me. And another Eagle first down. You know, we mentioned the Washington Redskins and all of the offensive line problems they've had this year in flux, so to speak. But the Eagles finally settled on their offensive line. They did the job here. Well, especially on the right side with Ron Baker and Ron Heller. But, you know, you talked about uh, Randall Cunningham getting that with ease. He makes it look so easy. He's got such great style and grace that he can even make a quarterback sneak look good. Eagles with a first down on the Redskin 32. Winding down to three minutes remaining in the first half. Cunningham has Haddix out of the backfield. Michael Haddix. He's had good years against the Skins. And Byers has just thrown Neil Olkowitz to the turf. I don't know if Olkowitz is going to take that ball home or what. Well, Olkowitz ripped it out of Haddix's hands. And he thought he had the fumble. And then Byers just did the natural thing by uh, <laughs> tackling him. So it's kind of a little payback there. They're not they're gonna mark this ball down though, but watch the end of it. Nice job by Byers not letting Okowitz. This is some of his own medicine though. You know, you're a defensive player, and uh, you got you're, you're not used to being an offensive player. Once you get the ball in your hands, you gotta take it as well as give it. An Eagle player is shaken up. We don't know who he is. When we come back, we'll identify him. Time out here in Philadelphia. Michael Haddix had his bell rung. He was the injured eagle, and he's off the field and going to get a little breather, or a big breather. Anthony Tony back in the lineup for Haddix. Second down and four for the Eagles. On the Redskin 26, 10-7 to seven the score in favor of the Eagles. Virtually the entire field now in shadow. Cunningham has Tony, and Tony goes nowhere. As the Eagle, the, the Redskin defense led by Neil Okowitz storm in there. You see the time getting close to the two-minute warning here in the first half. Eagles all year have been a really a fantastic second quarter football team. Scored something like 115 points while only giving up 40 points in that second quarter. So uh, they're looking for some more right now just before the two minute warning. Both teams have had opportunities inside the 20, but turnovers have ruined that. And now we're going to have a break. Our two minute warning is upon us. We'll be back. 
minutes remaining in the first half. The Eagles have the lead, and they're in Redskin territory. Both teams have three timeouts remaining. It'll be a third and four facing Randall Cunningham. Last time they were in this situation, they handed the ball to Keith Byers on a sweep around the right side, picked up a lot of yardage. Byers is out of the game now. Tony is the remaining back, and they're going with the three wide receivers. Keith Jackson has been a very important player in this type of situation all year long for the Eagles. Eagles have had a pretty much of a balanced attack. They have rushed 15 times and passed 16 times. They get much more balanced than that, can we? Third and four. And here comes the blitz and Cunningham. Running for the yardage. And let's see, he's marked out of bounds. It is a first down for Cunningham and the Eagles inside the 20-yard line. Darrell Grant on the stop. Cunningham has rushed for 27 yards. Good pressure by the Skins, but this is what they did not want to have happen. They don't want Randall Cunningham out in the open field. Wilbur Marshall comes on the blitz, does not come at the proper angle. Easy for Cunningham to get around him, and then watch the effort, just stretching him forward enough to get that first down. Richie Pettibone called him like a time bomb. You just never know when he's going to explode and make the big play on you. Maddox, a good receiver, is back in the game. Number 26 in the backfield. First and 10. Eagles on the 20 of the Redskins. Cunningham will run it again. And will slide inside the 15 and avoid getting hit by Walton. That was like a two express trains rushing at each other. Good pressure that time by Dave Butts. Cunningham is really showing a lot of smarts also by not uh, taking on Alvin Walton at the end of this run. Uh, he uses a timeout, or he doesn't use a timeout. He's going to let the clock run down and not give the Redskins a chance to uh, come back. But this is a very smart play, taking the old hook slide in as Walton tries to punish him with a left elbow. And the Eagles now call a timeout, and they were smart because they did let some time run off the clock. They know that they're at least in position to try a three-pointer, and they don't need a lot of time. They have a minute and 15 seconds remaining and two timeouts remaining. And when Cunningham goes, goes back into the huddle after conferring with Ted Plum and company, he'll have a second and three at the 13. Well, coming up at halftime, Brent Irv and Dick will get you up to date on all the scores and highlights, and Dick will have a story of a player and a position that's often overlooked, not by my partner Dan Fouts when he played. Ray Donaldson, the All-Pro center of attention for the Indianapolis Colts, and he was uh, fitted with a wireless mic, Dan, and so we'll get a glimpse of the side of a game that you don't often hear, although you did many times. You probably hear a lot of grunting and groaning <laughs> in there, and, and uh, you know, I'm sure they'll bleep out all the uh, language that's not too uh, uh, good to hear. What do you mean? Yeah, those centers, they're, <laughs> they're right in the middle, boy. That's why they're called center. 12th play of the drive coming up. Second and three for the Eagles. And on a fade pattern, Byers has it for the touchdown. Extended their lead now to 16 to 7 over the Redskins. Let's give a tip of the hat to the coaching staff for designing a play, finding the proper mismatch, and then the execution, having the players pull it off. Great job by Cunningham and Byers. Byers beat Todd Bowles on the fade pattern. Here is Luis Zendejas looking for the 17th point of the game for the Eagles, and the kick is no good. He missed it off to the right. And Luis Zendejas has failed for the first time this year to kick an extra point. And so the score remains 16 to 7 Eagles. Let's see if he just pushes it out to the right or if there's a hand put on it. It would appear that uh, he just pushed it. A little bit of a block out there. If you're a golfer, you know exactly how that feels. He'd be uh, teeing it up again and uh, stroking distance. Right away. So Zendejas misses his first of the year. And let's see whether that comes back to haunt the Eagles, who now will have to be satisfied with a nine point lead. Cunningham gets the uh, mismatch he wants. Keith Byers is going to run a pattern to the corner on Todd Bowles. Just a wonderful throw in the back corner where only Byers can make the grab. 
protection, but it really doesn't need it because it's just about a three-step step drop. And there you see the exact perfect place to put that ball. Randall Cunningham is 21st touchdown pass of the season, and he has been a threat today as a runner and a passer. And Keith Byers with his second touchdown of the game. There is the scoring drive. Cunningham was a perfect four for four and also rushed for 14 yards. 11 remaining in the first half. Then Dejas kicking off and Ricky Sanders on the 10. Sanders finally brought back after a good run back and a penalty marker is down as well. John Klingel made the stop for Philadelphia. But there's a flag. It'll be interesting to see what the Redskins do. They have three timeouts remaining. Ben Dreif. Holding court. <laughs> Let's see what kind of business they were doing on that return. There's a face mask on the uh, white team, IBW, on the red team, double foul after a change. The ball's gonna stay right where it is. Well, I, I got some of that. Okay, I know what a face mask is. I'm not sure what IDW is. Is that an airport in the area or something? Michael Haddock's here, number 26. Good to see him back in the game, but he's gonna get nailed for this uh, uh, face mask because he's on the white team. We heard that. And uh, IDW, I'm not sure. Illegal block below the waist. Doug Williams has come in for Mark Rippon. It's IBW, huh? IB. Yeah, yeah. So Doug Williams, who went home to Louisiana as his wife Lisa gave birth to a seven-pound son, Adrian Michael, came back and joined the team late last night. Doug Williams, the new quarterback for the Redskins. First down on the Washington 26. Mike Oliphant is the one running back. And Williams on first down up the middle, and it's incomplete. Art Monk, the intended receiver, but there were three Eagle defenders down the center of the field. Well, Joe Gibbs is showing us that he wants to win this ball game. He's not playing for next year. He's not playing for anything but today. And he realizes that Rippon's having a few problems. He's thrown two very costly interceptions. He's putting his, what he feels is ace in the hole back in the ball game, Doug Williams. And we'll see how he can do against his fired up Eagle team. Arrow Rippon's numbers so far. Second down and 10 for Doug Williams and the Redskins. This time going for Clark. And the pass is caught but out of bounds. Andre Waters was covering Gary Clark on the play, and that will bring up third down. You know, earlier in the week, Doug Williams met privately with Joe Gibbs. We'll have an illegal procedure call against the Redskins. Illegal motion on the offense. They decline the penalty. It's third down. And Doug Williams was reassured by Joe Gibbs in their face-to-face -face meeting that he has a secure future in Washington. Let's see how close we are being to out of bounds here. Good job of Waters coming over at the last second and preventing uh, uh, the possession from happening in the, the field of play. So it's third down and 10 on the 26. They're going to take another look. The thing that has impressed us about Joe Gibbs is the fact that he has taken the burden of the Redskin problems and pointed the finger at himself. And what he's done by doing that is he's protecting his team. What he's doing is he's focusing everything on him, bringing the media pressure on himself so that people don't start going around and looking for reasons. Is it the offensive line? Is it the defensive line? What is it? Hey, fellas, point the fingers at me. And by doing that, he is keeping his team together. He's unifying his team, and he's really doing the smart thing. Takes a lot of guts. And he was concerned about Doug Williams' feelings when he went with Mark Rippon, and Williams was healthy enough to play. He was concerned about how Williams was handling his status. And Doug Williams says, look, I'd like a future in Washington. And Joe Gibbs said, you have one here. And so both parties felt good. And lo and behold, here's Doug Williams in the second quarter of the next game. Let's take one more look here. Does uh, the question is possession here? 
where is where are his feet when he makes the grab it appears that they are in bounds the right heel is down but we can't tell from that angle if he has possession we do know that if he had two feet down inbounds that those two cheeks landed out of bounds keep in mind that if it is ruled complete the Eagles will then take the motion penalty which they decline so this all may be academic here and that's one of the problems with the replay is that they sometimes tend to lose the big picture of the football game they start zeroing in on a little uh, play like a possession thing where it really doesn't matter if it's complete or not they're getting the word didn't look from up here as if it was conclusive to change the call in any of it yeah, and I'm going to go to law school in the off season so I can uh, better explain to people what indisputable, uh, the visible evidence or whatever <laughs> right. it really is. The catch was good, but now we've got to penalize the offensive team for illegal motion. It's second down with a five-yard penalty. There you go. The Phoenix Cardinals. Trail now 17-7 to to the Giants. And Cincinnati on the way to nailing down at least a home field advantage in a wild card. I think they'll do better than that. Yep, the Cardinals can come back to win that ball game. They've got their final two at home against Philly and Green Bay. So they may be in the driver's seat. Second down and 15. They took the penalty back to the 21-yard line. Under a minute to go in the first half. Williams pass. Intended for Gary Clark. And that'll bring up third down. Williams was hit hard and he is slow getting up. Here's Reggie White, number 92, and Mike Pitts. They're working a little game inside. Reggie comes free, and there's a collision as uh, Clyde Simmons has also went on the play. It appeared that it might have been Williams' arm that got pinched in the uh, collision. Remember what Joe Gibbs said? He thought that the Eagle defensive line was one of the best, if not the best, in the NFL. Reggie White, Simmons, and George Jerome Brown, good rushers, and Mike Pitts normally a run defender, but not this time. Well, they know that Williams has to pass, and there's the collision right there. And he goes down in the heap. Mark Rippon, meanwhile, begins to warm up again. The Redskins' problems this year, it's interesting that their two Super Bowl heroes of last year are Doug Williams, who's right now on the turf here in Philadelphia, and Timmy Smith, who had that grand Super Bowl performance and was a disappointment. And you know that the Redskins, uh, I think they feel secure in having Rippon and Doug Williams, their quarterbacks, but they're going to be looking for a big back, I'm sure. You would think so because uh, that is what Joe Gibbs wants, a, a big guy that can move that pile. He's got the big offensive line. They're a very experienced group. Uh, he must be looking for a big guy. Well, next Sunday, beginning with the NFL today, CBS Sports presents doubleheader action. Detroit marches to Soldier Field to meet the Chicago Bears. Others will see Minnesota take on Green Bay or Dallas face Washington. Then in our second game, a big one. The New Orleans Saints battling the San Francisco 49ers as the NFC West lead could be up for grabs in that game. That's doubleheader action next Sunday on CBS Sports. So Mark Rippon enters the game and Doug Williams is knocked out after a couple of plays. And Rippon faces a third down and 15 back to the 21. He's thrown a touchdown pass to Ricky Sanders in this one. Williams walks it off. Rippon has all the fans, the rookie out of the backfield, but he'll be stopped way short, and the Redskins will have to kick it away. Seth Joyner was all over all the fans. And the Eagles immediately called timeout so that when they get the ball back, they'll uh, have another opportunity to get some more points. We're at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia in a critical NFC East battle. This is Dick Stockton and Dan Fouts. The Philadelphia Eagles lead 16-7. They have missed a conversion. That's why they have the nine-point lead. We have 38 seconds remaining. The Eagles have one timeout remaining, and they'll be banking on a good return here. The clock will stop on the possession change. 
to perhaps set up at least another field goal attempt before halftime is history. And Coleman's not a real long kicker, so uh, they should get it in pretty good field goal field position. Mark Konechny goes back deep for the Eagles. Line drive kick. Konechny bobbles it at the 32. line Terry Orr makes the stop that was a 42 yard kick but connect these 14 yard return does give the Eagles good field position right about the 45 yard line their own 45 forget coming up at halftime you'll have up-to-date scores and highlights with Brent Urban Dick at the NFL today 27 seconds remain in the first half so whatever Cunningham does will have to do it in the hurry yeah, but if anybody can, he's the man. Mm -hmm. Cunningham has Byers out of the backfield. Byers dives forward to the 41 of the Redskins. A first down, but that's not key. They're lining up. They still have one timeout remaining. And now the Eagles decide to use it right here. Cunningham calls their last timeout for Philadelphia with 11 seconds to go in the half, and they are at the Washington 41. You te sometimes tend to forget that Randall Cunningham is, is a youngster in this league. He's only in his fourth year. He really uh, should have used that timeout as soon as Byers was tackled. It's too difficult to get, move your entire team up the field 20 yards or so uh, to get lined up for another play. He blew about seven seconds off that clock that uh, he could have uh, probably could have used uh, coming up in a little bit later situation. Well, if you want to know precisely what the Eagles need to do to capture the NFC East, they win their last three games. Doesn't matter what anyone else does. But if they finish tied with the Giants or Phoenix, they have the tiebreaker. They beat the Giants twice this year, and they have a better division record than the Phoenix Cardinals. That's what the Eagles need to do. So 11 seconds to go, first and 10. Eagles on the Redskins, 41. No timeouts left. This pass is caught by Carter. Goes out of bounds with four seconds to go in the half. And they'll place it at the 28-yard line. A gain of 14. Wonderful, wonderful pattern, though, run by Chris Carter. He has really matured this year. As soon as Mike Quick went down with an injury, everybody felt that the Eagle passing game would be in big trouble. But two guys, Chris Carter and Keith Jackson, have really done a great job of picking up the slack. And here comes Luis Zendejas, who will attempt a field goal here to try to give the Eagles a 19-7 lead. This will be a 45-yard attempt. Telchik holding. Zendejas made good on a 40-yard attempt. Missed the conversion. This kick is no good it is short and time runs out in the first half so the eagles come up empty but they'll have the halftime lead zendejas is kicking into the wind here at this end of the stadium he gets under it a little bit too much and this ball will just die about five yards shy of the crossbar and that is the end of the first half here in Philadelphia with the score. The Eagles 16 and the Redskins 7. Back here at Veterans Stadium, Dick Stockton and Dan Fouts getting set for the second half kickoff. There's Doug Williams who's loosening up. He came out of the game. We didn't get an official report on his problem. Might have been a shoulder. The halftime statistics in a 16-7 Philadelphia lead. Rushing yards, interesting. The Eagles have outrushed the Redskins 96 to 56. And that's one of the real problems they've had all year is they're running a game. And the related statistic to the rushing yards is the one at the bottom, the time of possession. They have the edge there also. Talked about Byers with his two touchdowns. He has had a terrific first half. He has rushed for 50 yards and scored a touchdown and caught five passes for nearly 50 yards and a TD. So Keith Byers out of Ohio State looks like he's coming into his own. And... He has been a big boost to the Eagles. Bruce shoulder was the word on Doug Williams. Not serious. So we may be seeing him. Meanwhile, the Eagles will receive the second half kickoff. Chip Lowmiller will kick off for the Redskins. Mark Konechny and Walter Abercrombie are deep for the Eagles, and it sails into the end zone, and Abercrombie will down it there for a touchback. Dexter Manley, you know, had been out. He was shaken up earlier with a sprained knee, and he will not be back 
for the Redskins defense. Steve Hamilton has played most of the way at defensive end for him. So here comes Randall Cunningham, who's completed 12 of 17 passes and hit his last six in a row in the first half. Also rushed for 35 yards. Sixteen to seven Eagles. They missed an extra point, otherwise they would have had a ten-point lead. On the handoff, Michael Haddix gets a couple of yards. Let's take a look at the possessions in the first half for Philadelphia. They did not have good field position until their last time on they were unable to get the field goal, a short field goal, just before the half ended. And that one interception in there, of course, was that long pass that uh, Cunningham let go that uh, really turned into a similar to being a punch. Second down and eight for Cunningham on the 22-yard line. Pitch goes to Haddix. Haddix will have the first down and more. And Michael Haddix with a fine run is knocked out of bounds at the 37-yard line by Darrell Green. A gain of 15 yards. Well, Keith Byers is having a big day running and catching. Watch him block now on Wilbur Marshall. This is the key kickout block as Haddix pulls up inside. David Alexander seals off the inside, and this is one of Haddix's better runs all year long. Haddix has had a history of having good games against the Redskins. He's a good inside runner and really never paid the dividends that you would expect from the number one draft pick as he was several years ago. For the Eagles on their own 37. Cunningham with his first pass of the second half. It's caught by Haddix, who makes a fine one-handed grab and is about a yard short of the first down, but a penalty marker is thrown back to the line of scrimmage. Mel Kaufman made the stop on Haddix. This is foul. Number 71 took two steps, hit the quarterback late. That's 15. Charles Mann in the tack on 15 yards. Take a look at it. Cunningham had good protection. Here's Mann. We'll see exactly how many steps he does take. It's not Mann. It's Daryl Grant, number 77, though. But Ben mentioned number 71, if I heard him right. Well, he did, but, uh, you know, he had to look back and find a, a guy. The first number he saw was 71. Sorry, Charles. It's your buddy Daryl that will uh, <laughs> get credit or discredit for that play. But getting back to Michael Haddix, you talked about him being a number one pick, and he really hasn't paid any dividends. We've seen two plays in a row now that he's, uh, maybe the Eagles are going to start cashing in on him. That's a great one-handed grab. The Haddix with two fine plays back to back. And the Eagles find themselves in Redskin territory. Joe Gibbs muttering to himself or to anyone who will listen. The Eagles with a first down. All at the Redskin 39. Cunningham has hit seven in a row. formation on the delay Byers and Byers gets nothing and Raven Caldwell wrapped him up in a hurry Gibbs told us yesterday that he's being forced to use a lot of young players and he wants to see how they're going to do this fellow right here Raven Caldwell number 50 has had an outstanding day he sacked Cunningham twice forced one fumble and now he's in on another play on the other side of the ball. So he's a pressure type of linebacker, something the Redskins love to have. First time he ever played a game in a preseason contest against Pittsburgh, lost his helmet, then went after the tackle anyway. You knew he was tough then. Second down and 10 Eagles on the Redskins 39. Haddix giving ground, chased by Marshall. And Haddix gets a couple extra yards out of it before Neil Okowitz makes the stop. But good penetration by Wilbur Marshall. Marshall's had an outstanding year. A lot of people wonder why he hasn't been the dominant player like Lawrence Taylor. He's been a very consistent player, though. He's uh, very high in tackles, well over 100. A couple of sacks, you know. He's, he's been in the play. He's just a solid type of guy that uh, you'd love to have as a weak side linebacker. And he hasn't been really that healthy, yet he has never missed a practice and still leads the Redskins with three interceptions. Third down and seven. out of the shotgun by Cunningham. Here come the Redskins on a blitz. Penalty marker is down. And Ron Johnson, the intended receiver, had to get turned around. 
Incomplete. Clarence Vaughn was covering on the play, but a penalty marker is down, and it may be against Philadelphia. If the entire Eagle team saw the blitz coming and somebody up front must have flinched. You leave a motion on the offense. Well, I'm just glad it wasn't one of them IBWs. They're going to decline a penalty. Fourth down, and John Telchik will come in and kick, and that's Gary Clark going back for the Redskins. Got to watch Telchik here. He is probably the most dangerous punter in the NFL. He's had a number of fakes this year, and he does a lot of them on his own. Well rested. This will be his first kick of the afternoon. Fair catch called for by Clark. Inside the 10. this grab but it goes right through the old bread basket there and then there's a bunch of eagles down there ready to fall on it big turnover for the redskins puts the eagles in great position ty allard made the recovery number 58 for the eagles and here it is again they were all over him on the fumble and allard has it so now joe gibbs redskins will really be tested and we'll probably see what they're all about as they trail 16 to 7 and the eagles will have a first and goal on the redskins six. Third turnover by washington cunningham gets away from one defender goal and fires it out of bounds. No flag thrown. Bowles was in on a safety blitz, and Charles Mann had Cunningham from behind. What a great job by Cunningham getting away from all these guys. The rule is grasp and control when there's a sack. When you've got a player with the athletic ability of Randall Cunningham, control becomes the key word there. Bowles misses there. There's uh, Hamilton misses there. Good job of throwing the ball away under a lot of duress. It'll be second and goal. The ball is at the eight-yard line. That's one of the most exciting incomplete passes you'll ever see. <laughs> Looked like it came out of a ball machine. Cunningham stays in the pocket, and Raven Caldwell causes another fumble. Let's see who picks it up. Ron Heller, the right tackle, recovered from Philadelphia. Caldwell had two sacks and came storming in on this play. Uh, he'll get credit for another sack as he causes a fumble. He goes all the way around the outside, beats the block of Michael Haddix, punches the ball loose again, but Ron Heller is heads up, and he sees the ball on the ground and pounces on it. Caldwell showing a lot of speed, and really when he makes the hit on the quarterback, finds a way of punching the ball out. A loss of seven yards on the play will bring up third and goal back to the 17. The Eagles, of course, still in field goal range, leading 16 to 7. Cunningham looking to run. He's inside the 10, the 5, and spins down to the 2. But he couldn't get in, and that'll bring up fourth down. This play is designed to be a shuffle pass. Cunningham will sprint to this side, and then he'll hand the book pitch the ball inside to Haddix. What he does is he sees that there's no hole there, packs it under his arm, and then he's going to follow the running, or the blocking down the field. But isn't it great just to watch him operate in the open field? It'll be fourth and goal at the two, and we could look at him run all day long. And you just feel the entire stadium hold their breath when he's carrying that football. Buddy Ryan is looking for the six points here at fourth and goal. to bring on Luis Zendeja. So the Eagles will settle for three. The crowd would like him to get the touchdown, but this is the play, no question, in a nine-point lead. 
The nine point lead is the key. This gives them 12 points and uh, prevents the uh, Redskins from uh, getting back in the game with a touchdown and a field goal. Now the Skins to take the lead will have to have two touchdowns. Zendejas was good on a 40 yarder, missed the 45 and has also missed an extra point. This will be a 19 yard field goal attempt with 11 minutes and 20 seconds remaining in this third quarter. Interesting that he has only attempted one field goal inside the 20 this year until now. That tells me that when they get uh, this close, they're usually scoring touchdowns. So the 19-yard field goal is basically the same distance as an extra point. Teltik, the punter, will hold. And this kick is perfect. So the Eagles get three points out of that fumble punt by Gary Clark and now lead it 19 to 7. Back here at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia and a sellout on a big Sunday for the Eagles who are looking for a division title. Right now they lead the Washington Redskins 19 to 7 with 11.05 remaining in the third quarter. This is Dick Stockton along with Dan Fouts. And Zendejas, who has kicked two field goals, getting set to boot one again. And Ricky Sanders is back deep for the Redskins. 11.05 remaining in this third quarter. Zendejas with another short kickoff. And Sanders will field it on the 17. Gets a burst of speed. And Ricky Sanders finally run out of bounds close to midfield by Izell Jenkins. A 30-yard return. Well, a Giants stadium at the Meadowlands. Giants are in front of the Phoenix Cardinals comfortably in the third quarter, 24-7. Next Saturday, the battle in the NFC East will heat up as the Cardinals at home play host to the Eagles in a rematch of their game last weekend at Philadelphia won 31-21. It all starts with the NFL today at 3.30 Eastern. The 47 for the Redskins. Mark Rippon is in at quarterback, looking to throw on first down. And going deep, and it is intercepted. Eric Allen. And the Eagles get it back. Eric Allen with an interception in the fourth turnover by the Redskins this afternoon. We talked about setting the tempo, and uh, the uh, Eagles are getting a little bit of help from the Redskins in setting this tempo. This is another turnover, and this is just another poor decision by Rippon, trying to make too much happen. And you know when a quarterback knows he made a mistake, he's going to be the guy, first guy down on that tackle. Mark Rippon coming up to make the tackle after throwing that interception. Three interceptions today thrown by Mark Rippon and Eric Allen, the rookie from Arizona State, has picked off his fifth of the year. He is second on the club behind Terry Ho. First down, Eagles on their 31-yard line, leading 19-7. Keith Byers is upended by Raven Caldwell, and if there's one player on the Redskin defensive unit who has made a positive impression on Joe Gibbs and his staff, it has been Raven Caldwell today. Had an outstanding afternoon, but getting back to that turnover, Dick, that is the 39th turnover for the Redskins this year. That's an unheard of number well, for a Super Bowl defending champ. You know, if you're not causing turnovers and you're making turnovers, your record should be six and seven or worse. And they can talk about all the reasons why they're in this position right now, but uh, that turnover is a big one. Loss of three on that play, second and 13. Cunningham goes to Byers out of the backfield, and he'll have a first down for the Eagles. Alvin Walton makes the stop. Another jewel to a glittering afternoon for Keith Byers and a gain of 15 yards to the 43-yard line. Been a lot of turnovers. The Redskins have turned the ball over four times today. And a touchdown and a field goal resulting in the Eagles with the ball right here. Have a first down on their own 44. Tough day for that man, Mark Rippon. He's a youngster. He's got to learn, and he is really going to school today. Cunningham with a screen, and Darrell Green nearly tore the ball away from Mike 
quick, and if he had been able to catch it, he would have been able to waltz into the end zone. Oh, that's for sure. This was a quick screen out to the left side to uh, Mike Quick, and, and uh, Chris Carter is also to this left side. His responsibility is to go out and block Green. He misses the block on Green. Daryl Green had a great read on the ball, and he's got to be terribly disappointed he couldn't come up with a grab because, as you said, Dick, that was a waltz into that end zone. Would have got the skins back in this ball game. Second down and 10 for the Eagles on their 42-yard line. Byers slides up the middle. Picks up a good chunk of yardage. Gets to about the 48-yard line. Daryl Grant on the stop. The clock winds down to nine minutes remaining in the third quarter. Eagle running game has uh, been very impressive today against a tough defensive line. And it's the, it really the important thing that I see is that at this point of the season, the Eagles have been struggling all year long trying to run the ball. Now they're heading into the cold weather games where you've got to run the ball. Now they're going to be heading into the playoffs, it looks, where you've got to be able to control the ball on the ground. And they're getting it done today. Third down and four. Cunningham drills it incomplete. He was going for Mike Quick. Darrell Green defending. Talk about the running game. The Eagles have rushed for 136 yards already this afternoon. That's more than the average per game coming in. So it's fourth down. John Telchik, who has punted once, will be kicking. Gary Clark fumbled a fair catch the last time he had a chance to handle the ball. High kick. Hit by Frizzell immediately and knocked down to the five. Great special teams coverage by William Frizzell, and he's done that all year. The, the key was that 44-yard punt that was so high. Great hang time. Great coverage. bit of advice from a fan and a little hope for some Eagle fans. Chew up the skins. Buddy, chew your food. Think Buddy's mom sent that sign I over think so. I mean, they took him to the hospital the other day. There was a patient there and he said, you got to chew your food. That's his motto now. Doug Williams is back in at quarterback for the Redskins. Mark Griffin has struggled today. Redskins on their own eight-yard line. And the give is to Jamie Morris and the Eagles shut him down. Wes Hopkins forced the play from the secondary. So they've gone back and forth this afternoon. There's the giant lead over Phoenix, 24-7. As you see other scores come your way on the CBS Sports Wire. Dallas uh, battling back against Cleveland there. How about Tampa Bay leading Buffalo 10-2? Very hard to maintain a tremendous year like the Bills have had so far. But who would ever figure that score? Second down and 10 on the eight-yard line. Doug Williams, he's got Terry Orr, the H-back. And Orr diving forward, still short of a first down. Wes Hopkins and the middle linebacker Mike Reichenbach were in on the stop. Well, it's time to check in on the uh, Reggie White show, see how the Redskins are handling him now. He's number 92 on the left of the screen here, and he's working against the big guy, Joe Jacoby. And let's give Jacoby the decision, although the power of Reggie White getting up underneath Jacoby's shoulder pads and pushing him back. That's a big load to be pushing around all day. Three wide receivers in there for the Redskins on third down and four. Williams quickly to Sanders. He's got the first down. And Eric Allen wrestles him down on the 24-yard line but the Redskins. It's a 10-yard pick up to Sanders. The one good bright spot about the Redskins this year is that since Joe Gibbs has been the head coach, they have never had three receivers catch 50 or more passes in a year. This year, they'll have three wide receivers catch 50. And that'll be Sanders, Monk, and Clark, and both, all of them are over 50 on the year. First down, Redskins. Jamie Morris back in, in the backfield on the 25 of the skin. Here's Morris. Runs right into Clyde Simmons. Gets a couple of yards. Six minutes and 15 seconds remaining. We're in the third quarter. Nick Stockton and Dan Fouts as the Eagles try to win their final home game of the season and move one step closer to what they hope will be an NFC Eastern Division title. 
Uh, it should go right down to the last week of the season, seeing that the Giants are still in it with their uh, apparent victory today over the Cardinals. Pressure on Williams. Gets rid of it. And Todd Bell on the short hop, but it was Reggie White who really very nearly got to Doug Williams before he got rid of the ball. We spent a lot of time talking about stats. Well, this is a defensive lineman stat that's called a hurry. Uh, it's not a sack, but what it is is it forces a quarterback to throw the ball early. It hurries them. Now, I don't know a quarterback in the league that doesn't when he gets back in that pocket hurry his throw because guys like Reggie White are coming after him all the time. The Eagles go with extra defensive backs. Brazell, Hogue, and Everett. Seth Joyner, the only linebacker in there, on third and eight. On the Redskins, 27. Doug Williams up the middle. Gary Clark has it. And a first down into Eagle territory. A gain of 28 yards. Eric Allen makes the stop. But the Redskins are in Philadelphia territory here in the third quarter. Great pass protection for Williams on this third down uh, play, showing that he still has a great gun. I wonder if the, his shoulder is sore, though, because this is a wonderful throw for a guy with a sore shoulder. Right on the money, and Gary Clark makes the catch. Clark has caught four passes, but let's see the line play. Oh, you hurry the quarterback once, you're going to get extra attention. Reggie White is double-teamed that time by Raleigh McKenzie and Mark May. Those are Clark's numbers. They're impressive today. That's only the third first down, however, for the Redskins since the first quarter. Doug Williams with a lot of time, and wide open is Gary Clark. Inside the 20, inside the 10, and out of bounds, and another big play. And a penalty flag is down right around the line of scrimmage. A face mask penalty called against Washington. 39-yard play. Will go by the boards, perhaps. And the Redskins have got to be asking themselves, what next? What could possibly go wrong now? Number 68 grabbed the face mask. That's 10 yards for holding on the offense. 10 yards, and it's first down. Russ Grimm, the left guard. Costly penalty. Left side of the screen is Russ Grimm right here. Let's watch him reach out and grab the face mask. against Reggie White. I still don't see it yet. There it is right at the end of the play. My question to that is if it's a, a face mask penalty, should it be five yards or 15? Instead, they called it holding, which is 10, so I guess he's splitting the difference. Well, it wiped out a 39-yard pass completion, so the Redskins, instead of first and goal, have first and 20 back on their own 45. by Clark. He'll have a first down. Was hit hard by Hopkins and Waters, and he is shaken up for the moment. The last three plays, we've really seen the liability of the Eagle pass defense. They are not a good zone pass defense team. They got to play man-to-man -man in order to be effective, and you're seeing Williams with time to throw now. He's picking them apart, and he's picking them apart deep down the field. Ooh. The old sandwich shot there. Good clean hit, though, by Andre Waters and Wes Hopkins. Clark is carried off the field, and he's obviously hurting Anthony Allen. In the game for the first time, number 89 at wide receiver. It'll be first and 10. Redskins on the Eagle 33, under four minutes to go in the third quarter. Good play fake by Williams. And the pass is caught at the 25-yard line. Nope, now they rule it incomplete. Nearly a tremendous catch by Allen. You talked about the other three wide receivers, Monk, Sanders, and Clark, but uh, it's not bad having an Anthony Allen come off the bench and help you out. He's a fine young receiver. Redskins are showing us, though, that they're not going to roll over and give up now. There's plenty of time left to go. If they can go down and get some points here, they're back in this ball game, and they may have taken a little steam out of the Eagles. Despite the fact that they have had an error code game themselves. Second and ten on the 33 of Philadelphia. Williams. 
Incomplete. Art Monk. Penalty marker down at the line of scrimmage. Seth Joyner defending. Personal foul, number 92, coming down on the quarterback. Pitch. Reggie White, it'll be 15 yards. Now we're seeing it all today. Reggie White is number 92. He's working right in the middle of the screen against his old college teammate, Raleigh McKenzie. And this is an unfortunate call because he's trying to block the pass right now, and then he hits... Williams in the head. I've seen a lot worse things happen to quarterbacks than that, and I know Reggie has too. Even here at Veterans Stadium, even this year. Yeah, you bet. Uh, Andre Waters hit Jim Everett, one that I've never seen before, but that's another subject. Well, it was nice visiting with Andre yesterday when he joined our little meeting looking at the videotape. Always a pleasure to talk to Andre Waters. First and 10 as a result of the 15 yard penalty on the 18 of the Eagles. The delay. Jamie Morris gets a good hole off the right side. And Waters wrestles him down at about the 11 yard line. There's the time remaining in the third quarter. The Eagles in front, 19 to 7. You know, it seems like every time you watch an Eagle ball game that there's a period of the game where they just kind of go flat. They have to play with so much emotion and so much pressure uh, that they sometimes it, it all leaves them, just kind of like the air going out of a balloon. They're having one of those sinking spells right now, and the Redskins may be clawing their way back into this ball game. Second down and three on the 11. Here's Morris again. And he gets a yard, that's all. The Redskins have rushed the ball 14 times this afternoon, all of them, by the fourth-round draft pick, Jamie Mark. He has gained those 66 yards. That time, Todd Bell and Andre Waters brought him down. It'll be third and two on the 10. Now, this is what the Redskins have done. 22 times they have scored in their last 25 trips. Field goal for them exactly what they would want here. A touchdown really thrust them back in the game. They've had the ball for six minutes on this drive. And a penalty marker down. Delay of the game. The clock ran down. Another costly mistake at a crucial time. And Doug Williams is beside himself. He is telling his receivers something about where they were lined up or maybe what pattern they were supposed to run. Well, what he is telling them is, uh, hey, listen, you got to get set before I can send a guy in motion. But that one of the difficult things or, or one of the real problem things that happens with a team that uses a lot of formations in motion is just get set, and then, uh, then we can put the guy in motion. But uh, another critical error for the Skins. Third down and seven. Back to the 15. see whether Jim Lachey had drawn the defense offside. It appears that he did. False start number 79. Kind of like their entire year. They're just going backwards when, it, when they need to be going forwards. Ten yards now in penalties. Lachey pulls up offsides. Trying to get back in his uh, pass blocking position, but how many times can you say another critical error? There's the Redskin drive. They did have third and two. Now it is third down and 12. Back at the 20-yard line. Well, you can count the errors the Redskins have made. They have made a bundle today. and has made many big plays this year, including that touchdown run on the blocked field goal against the Giants. He's one of those guys that has a knack for blocking kicks. He's blocked seven in his career. Here's Chip Miller with a 37-yard attempt. Holding is Coleman, the punter. 
The kick is good, and so the Redskins get something out of it. And with a minute and 35 remaining in the third quarter, it's a 19 to 10 Eagle lead. The Eagles lead the Redskins 19 to 10. Chip Low Miller with a field goal to bring the Redskins to within nine. That quarter, Low Miller, who was the top pick, picking on the second round, will be kicking to Mark Konechny and Walter Abercrombie. Going over to Abercrombie in the end zone, and they'll down it there for a touchback. Low Miller has been effective with long kicks this afternoon. The San Francisco 49ers in a big road game in Atlanta this afternoon, and it's a tight game in the fourth quarter with the Niners leading the Falcons 7-3. Going in, San Francisco trailed the Saints by a game with the Rams two games behind. And next Sunday, a giant game. The Saints and the 49ers meet at Candlestick Park, 4 o'clock Eastern. Part of a CBS doubleheader, and there's the list of the early games with the NFL today kicking it all off at 12.30 Eastern. Beat the Saints by one point, remember, in the season opener at the Superdome in New Orleans. First down, Eagles on the 20-yard line. He fires. Penalty marker down, brings it out to the 24. Bell Kaufman on the stop and a holding penalty against Philadelphia. Remington to center. Actually, Remington has really come on and played well for the Eagles at center. They've had a lot of changes. You talked about the guards, Alexander and Baker, who have made an impression. Well, the, you, what this is, ha what has happened for the Eagle line is that you've got brought in veteran ball players to go along with uh, uh, your other veteran that you have, Ron Baker. Heller and Remington have really solidified that team. It took them a while to work together as a unit, but in their last four games, they've only given up ten sacks an offensive line and the sacks today have come from linebackers so they're still doing their good job. Two tight end alignment on first and 20. Fires again. He fires brings it out to the 20 yard line so he gets half of those yards back. Mel Kaufman again makes the stop. 63 yards today on 11 carries for Keith Byers. He's having a his best day as a runner for the Eagles this season. That was really a big run, too, because not only did it get, get him back 10 yards, it uh, brought him out of that terrible field position, and now they're in a second and 10 situation, and uh, they're almost back to normal. Half a minute remaining in the third quarter. Second down 10 for Philadelphia. They lead it 19 to 10 over the Redskins. Play action, fake to Byers. And an alert defensive play that time by Charles Mann and Walton Mann in particular as Tempers Flair, Heller, and Wilbur Marshall were going at it for the moment. The clock stopped with 18 seconds to go in the third quarter. A little bit of a lack of concentration there on somebody's part, maybe Cunningham's, maybe uh, one of the running backs, because he just missed that uh, handoff there and was left with nothing to do but scramble for his life. Redskins are going to use one of their three second half timeouts right here with 18 seconds to go in the third quarter. Any clue? I don't know. Well, this may surprise you, but Dick, I have no clue <laughs> as to why they use a the timeout there. It reminds me of a time uh, we were playing a ball game in the heat in Kansas City, and I went into the huddle, and our offensive uh, lineman said, uh, you know, we, we've got to call, uh, let the clock run down to the two-minute warning. And uh, so I did, and... Uh, Looked up at the clock. Well, it was the third quarter. I got talked into using the timeout by my own well, offensive well, lineman. One of the possibilities here may be the win. You know, uh, I, I think the, the feeling is, and the word is, that they called a timeout because of the stiff wind down them. Well, it really is blowing in this direction. And we've seen the big kickoffs from Low Miller in this direction. And we've seen some poor punts going the other way. So there you see it at the top of the stadium. That could be the reason. Well, the wind that you see at the top of the stadium is exactly the opposite to where the way the wind is blowing on the field. One of these circular stadiums where the wind will swirl. Third down and 10 on the 20-yard line. The Redskins using up one of their three timeouts. Cunningham caught in the air, incomplete. Keith Jackson, the intended receiver, he thought he was interfered with by Walton. 
But no flag is down, and that will bring up fourth down. Well, let's see if Jackson has an argument here. Here he is in the slot, number 88. And uh, Walton gets a good break on the ball. Simple hook pattern right at the first down yardage. And he went through that outside shoulder. That could have been called. He's got a point. And he is pointing. Fourth down, and Telchik will kick from the five. Anthony Allen goes back deep for the Redskins. And he shanked it off the side of his foot. And it goes out of bounds at the 45 of Philadelphia. So Telchik did not get off a good kick. It was only 26 yards long. And with six seconds to go, the Redskins will have the ball. And we're still in the third quarter in Eagle territory at their 45. You got to hand it to Joe Gibbs and his coaching staff for recognizing a situation where the weather can con make a con contribution to the ball game. But using that timeout with 18 seconds to go at the end of the third quarter, perhaps set up that poor punt by John Telcher. The Doug Williams running the Redskins here on the 45 yard line. Washington has not been able to run the ball effectively today. Jamie Morris is the setback. Williams steps up and a fine catch by Ricky Sanders will be enough for a Washington first down as time runs out. And that's the end of the third quarter with the score. The Eagles 19 and the Redskins 10. As we begin the fourth quarter, the game between the Redskins and the Eagles, the Eagles lead it 19 to 10, and they are one quarter and two games away from capturing an NFC East Division title. Buddy Ryan in his third year as head coach of this club. Looking to capture it all, and the Eagles control their own destiny. Meanwhile, the Redskins have a first down on the Eagle 33. Jamie Morris. It's inside the 30. Reichenbach was there. Right now for an NFL Today update, here's Brent Musburger in New York. Brent? Well, Dick, the Dallas Cowboys have played extremely well against the Cleveland Browns. Start of the fourth quarter, though, Bernie Kosar to Herman Fontenot, who breaks free, and the Browns have the lead right now, 17-14. Back to Dick. All right, Brent, thank you. And, of course, the Browns are solid in a wild-card situation, and they're looking to gain that momentum going into the playoffs. Three wide receivers for the Redskins. Second down and five on the 28. Williams and open is Sanders. He's got a first down and is pushed out of bounds by Allen at the 17-yard line. Sanders is working on the outside against Eric Allen on a comeback route, and Doug Williams uh, has the necessary strength as a quarterback to just flip it out there. And very few quarterbacks throw it as well as Doug Williams does. Sanders has caught five passes for 70 yards. And, of course, he has a 16-yard touchdown reception today, his 10th of the year to lead the league. First down, Redskins on the Eagles, 17. Here's Morris. And he gets inside the 15-yard line, picked up about three or so. And the tackle made by Reggie White. Andre Waters also there. Early here in the fourth quarter, and Dan, I'd have to feel that if the Redskins get something out of this, a touchdown or a field goal, there's going to be a lot of pressure on the Philadelphia Eagles at this point to withstand an experienced club. We talked earlier about the fact that a lot of these players on this Eagle football team have never been in this situation before. Well, they're finding out what it takes to become a champion against last year's champion. Second down and seven on the 14 of the Eagles. By Williams intended for Sanders it was high Allen was covering on the play no one had a chance for it and it'll bring up third down really good coverage by Eric Allen Williams saw that uh, Sanders couldn't get inside on the slant pattern and just let the ball go high knowing it, it would have been a tough completion Eric Allen who has been a starter since the day he was drafted second round pick out of Arizona State he has an interception today his fifth of the year and has had a fine rookie year. Really has. He should make the all-rookie team for sure. Third and seven. Williams on.
and the pressure pass is tipped away. Art Monk was waiting for it for the score, but Wes Hopkins got his hand on it first, and that will bring up fourth down, and the Redskins come close to getting six. Williams is trying to go to Monk right down the middle. As you said, Dick, he has the time to throw, and now he lets it go, and Hopkins just makes an outstanding play, knocking the ball away. But look at all the other Eagles in the area. They were looking for Art Monk also. Jerome Brown put the pressure on, and so Chip Lowmiller is in to try a 32-yard field goal. And the ball is bobbled by Coleman. And the Redskins come up empty. Another mistake by Washington. Unbelievable. A chip shot field goal, and they don't get anything out of it as the ball goes right through Coleman's hands, hits him in the head, and now he's stuck. Stuck with it. Should have put it down and let it, the kicker kick it. The Redskins could have cut the lead to six. William Frizzell, who's been a terrific special teams player all year for the Eagles, and Philadelphia takes over possession. Still a lot of time remaining, 13-22. Well, you want to football team or not, but I had talked to Jimmy Giles about that. He said, well, maybe we're just destined to win. We have the desire and the will, and when you have these good things, you make good things happen. And then you start to expect good things to happen. And the Eagles are playing like they're going to be the new champs. Keith Jackson on the receiving end. Kaufman making the stop. Game five that time. This is Keith Jackson. What a great rookie year he's had. He may be the rookie of the year in the NFL. Running a little option route against Neil, Neil Oakwood. And then coming back to the quarterback. Seeing that uh, his quarterback was in trouble. And making the grab. Keith Jackson has set a new Eagles single-season receiving record. Mike Quick held the old one. He could be a shoo-in for the Rookie of the Year honors in the NFC. Second down and four on the 35. Michael Haddix moves the line and is close to first down yardage. Raven Caldwell and Neil Olkowitz on the stop. The biggest difference I've seen with this Eagle team this year is when they take the field now, they expect to win. And when you talk about confidence, what makes up confidence? Well, it, it takes good players, it takes good plans, but it also takes the mindset that, hey, we can beat anybody we play. We expect to be the winners when the day is over. And That's confidence. Yep, yeah, and indeed the changing of the guard sign could be prophetic here. The Eagles trying to eliminate the Redskins. Third down and one. 38 of Philadelphia. Here's Byers. His second effort will make it awfully close. Wilbur Marshall in on the stop. And they do have the first down. Byers has the first down up to the fourth. Wilbur Marshall really laid it to him, though, but uh, Byers had that head of steam up, and he's a tough guy to bring down. What a great day he's having. He is having a best uh, terrific day as a running back where the Eagles have been struggling this year. But you're right. You talked about Keith Jackson. Here's Cunningham, the most dangerous offensive weapon. Keith Jackson, the top rookie. Reggie White, who many people think the best defensive player. You know, three jewels. First down, Cunningham gets by Olkowitz. Pass incomplete. They had two receivers to the far side of the field, including Jimmy Giles. Addicts also there. And earlier in the year, they were really relying on two men on this football team, Randall Cunningham on their offense and Reggie White on their defense, to win ball games for them or to come up with the big plays. The thing that they're realizing now is that, hey, listen, we can all make those big plays. We can all make a big contribution to the outcome of the game. And now you're seeing guys like Byers come through with a big day today. Now they get Mike Quick back into their lineup. They're going to be awfully tough the rest of the year and on into the playoffs. Second down and 10 at the 40 for the Eagles. 11.06 remaining in the fourth quarter. Haddock will be stuffed and a loss on the play of about a yard or so. Caldwell and Dave Butts force the play. 
Well, that botched uh, field goal try really hurts the Redskins. If they make that, they're within six points. They have momentum on their side, but you just get a feeling now they blow that play. Uh, you look down on that field, there's a lot of heads being uh, bowed at the, on the sidelines, and they're really uh, looking like a team that's defeated. Well, they've turned the ball over four times today, and uh, this then could be a critical drive for the Eagles. They have a third down and ten. This is a proud organization, the Washington Redskins. They don't have many years like this. Cunningham, and the ball was tipped at the line, incomplete. Wilbur Marshall tipped it, and that'll bring up fourth down. Plenty of time remaining in this one, but the Redskins have been self-destructing today with uh, critical mistakes, penalties, fumbles, interceptions, mental errors all afternoon. Anthony Allen goes deep, Telchik getting set to kick. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Honda, maker of the Civic Four Door, Seagram's Coolers, and by AT&T, the right choice. By Seagram's Coolers. This is where the fun starts. Big day for Keith Byers. 127 total yards, including two touchdowns. Four turnovers, and the Eagles have gotten 10 points off of those turnovers, and yet the Redskins have an opportunity here that if they can come back and get a field goal or a touchdown, it's going to put more heat on the Eagles. Well, Keith Byers has had an outstanding day, and they really need for him to get that running game going. But this was earlier in the game on his touchdown pass as he uh, beat Todd Bowles in the corner of the end zone, took a perfect strike from Randall Cunningham for the six points. First down at the 19 for the Redskins. Williams has Sanders. He's out of bounds. Roynell Young made the play at the 21. New England Patriots keep their playoff hopes alive and deal the Seattle Seahawks a blow in a 13-7 victory. Well, the Seahawks, they didn't want to get too far above 500, Dick. They beat the Raiders last week, and now they're settling right back on that even Steven mark of 500. It'll be second down and three for the Redskins on their 26. Ten minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. A lot of time. Jamie Morris, maybe a yard, and that'll bring up third and short. Clyde Simmons and Reggie White, the two defensive ends. In the AFC West, let's focus in on that story. Denver with a lead over Seattle by a half a game. The Raiders are a game out. Denver against the Raiders later on in a big game. And Jay Schrader will start for the Raiders, and everybody remembers what he did in his first start against Denver, leading the Raiders back from 24 points down at halftime. Third down and two at the 27. Williams. He was going for Clark, and Allen was with him step for step, and it'll be fourth down. There's Russ Grimm, the left guard, who had been hurt at the start of this season. The Redskins, normally impenetrable offensive line, opening up big holes. They've had their problems up front all season. Let's take a look at uh, Grimm. He's right in the middle here. And let's watch his right knee. Oh, it's just another one of these plays that so many offensive linemen will get hurt on that type of play, where there he is blocking his own guy and having somebody fall on his leg. But it looks like he's in good shape, though. Great sign seeing him walk off under his own power. It's fourth down, and Greg Coleman will kick. Mark Konechny goes deep for the Eagles. Looking for good field position. Connect 
safety. And he's dropped on his own 40-yard line. A 37-yard kick. Kurt Gouveia makes the stop. The Eagles get the ball back when we come back to Veterans Stadium. Down for 9.06 remaining in the fourth quarter. Cunningham gets out of trouble and finds Chris Carter. Goes out of bounds, picking up eight yards. Wilbur Marshall made the defensive play. The Eagles lead it 19 to 10. They've missed a conversion today. Otherwise, they would have had a 10-point lead. What kind of errors have the Redskins made today? There you look. Eight penalties, four turnovers, four drop passes, and they fumbled a field goal snap, and that may loom the largest. Uh, these are all symptoms of a struggling team and one that's got to do a lot of soul-searching in the offseason. You know that Bobby Bethel probably already started on that throw. Second and two. Cunningham looking for quick. Defending on the play was Darrell Green. That'll bring up third down. Cunningham is so cool in that pocket. Uh, nothing seems to really bother him. Talked to him about it yesterday, how he can stand in that pocket with just... Uh, no movement at all, just surveying the field. He says that deep down inside he's very nervous back there, but it, it's great to see a guy not show his emotions. He'd be a great poker player, I know that. <laughs> it's amazing how he just stands upright, doesn't really show, doesn't flinch. He is uh, what you would call cool. Third down and two. Three tight ends in there for the Eagles. Cunningham on a play. Fake and more. Alvin Walton. And a big mistake by Randall Cunningham. And the Redskins will have the ball on the Eagle 40-yard line. This is just the 13th interception all year for the Redskins. I got to question the call with this type of lead. A play action on third and short. The Redskins are not fooled at all. This ball is deflected at the line of scrimmage. And Walton would have had him covered anyway. Dave Butts deflected it. The pass was intended for Keith Jackson. So now the Redskins, with eight minutes and 43 seconds to go in the fourth quarter, have a first down on the Eagle 40, trailing 19 to 10. They spread Sanders and Clark wide out. Williams goes inside to Monk. Penalty marker down at the line of scrimmage, and Monk is stopped at the 32 by Seth Joyner. Appears to be against the Redskins, and it is. And again, it's the illegal use of the hands going to the head. Very unusual call against an offensive lineman. Six on the offense, big hand in the face mask, 10 yards. Joe Jacoby. That's so frustrating for an offensive lineman. Here you can see Big Joe. He is trying to pass block, and he's trying to hit his man in the shoulders. Of course, he's going against the best in the league there, Reggie White, but those hands are out. And he hits him right in the face, and he gets the call against him. But that's what you might call a ticky-tack call against an offensive lineman. He wasn't really intending to create a penalty there. He just got his hands a little too high. 49ers beat the Falcons 13-3, putting pressure on the Saints. They've got a big one with Minnesota coming up later on. Nine penalties marked off against the Redskins. First down and 20. Here's Sanders. In the foot race with Roynell Young. Sanders will get the first down for the Redskins and out of bounds inside the 30. Run out by Frizzell, but not before Sanders gets 23 yards on that slant in pass from Doug Williams. This is a wonderful little pattern by Sanders. He's going to come down the field and delay and then take off. There you see the delay pattern. He sees it cleared out underneath. And now he uses his great speed to run away from Roy Nell Young, avoid this tackle by Todd Bell, and then, the bonus of all, get out of bounds and stop the clock. Seven catches for 100 yards for Ricky Sanders today. And a first down for Washington on the Philadelphia 27. Williams got rid of it in a hurry as Seth Joyner and Todd Bell both put tremendous pressure on Doug Williams. So with the 49ers beating Atlanta, 
The Saints now need a victory on the road in Minnesota to hold on to the lead in the Western Division. And next week is a big one between New Orleans and San Francisco. And tomorrow night, the Bears travel to Anaheim to face the Rams, who are still in contention. And you talked about teams that are coming to the front now towards the end of the season. Those Minnesota Vikings are playing some good ball, very reminiscent of the way they played at the end of last year. Second down and 10 off the 27. Exactly eight minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Pressure again on Williams. It's tipped and it's caught. Pass is completed to Mike Oliphant out of the backfield. Jerome Brown, number 99, got his hand on it. It's really hard to imagine a ball being deflected at the line of scrimmage uh, and still being caught. Uh, Brown gets his right hand up there, but watch Oliphant just keep after it. Gives you some idea of how strong Doug Williams' arm is. If he can throw it through a guy's hand like that, still have it complete. Reichenbach made the stop. Seven defensive backs in for Philadelphia on third and five at the Eagle 22. Penalty marker is down. Williams. Pass nearly picked off by Terry Hogue, who's picked off a bunch this year. But this play was whistled dead before the snap of the ball. The referees came in signaling that the penalty was against the offense and uh, uh, there would have been no interception. Might be against Lachey, the left tackle. Look at the Giants score, 44 to 7 over the Phoenix Cardinals. Here's There's a false start on number 79 on the offense. Five yard penalty. He's had his problems there today. Jim Lachey at left tackle. You almost wonder if the crowd is making enough noise to uh, cause that. Uh, Lachey is the farthest man on that side of the line of scrimmage from the quarterback, and you just wonder if he's having trouble hearing the cadence. be set back to the 27 yard line it'll be third down and 10 for the Redskins seven minutes and nine seconds the clock running the clock becoming an important factor here for the Redskins who need something on this drive Williams on third down wide open is Oliphant he'll have the first down for the Redskins Inside the 15, Allen on the stop. And it stops the clock with 6.49, a gain of 13, and the Redskins are threatening big. We're seeing a reason why the Eagles are the worst pass defense in football. They've given up 258 yards per game. Here's a third and 10, and they do not even cover a guy coming out of the backfield. Oliphant is wide open, makes the grab, and again gets out of bounds, stopping the clock, and the Skins still got a chance. the Redskin offense, the Philadelphia defense, a wide disparity there in the pass area. First down for Washington on the Eagles 13, trailing by nine. Here's Art Monk. And Monk gets it closer to the goal line, knocked out of bounds at about the six by Roynell Young. Earlier we saw Ricky Sanders on a delay pattern over the middle. This time, it's Art Monk, but what he does is he breaks his pattern back to the outside like on a fake delay. Williams is going to roll to him a little bit, get, buy him a little extra time. There's Monk after the fake. Here he takes on Andre Waters, deposits him on the ground, and he gets out of bounds to stop the clock. Doug Williams trying to bring the Redskins closer. Mark Griffin started and threw three interceptions marker down on second and two at the five and it might have been Lachey once more false start number 79 on the offense it was five yards and it's second down well Lachey's at the very end of the line here at the top of the screen and you'll just see him move ever so slightly there he goes and this is three on him and I don't ever recall having played with Jim for three years him ever being offside once. You don't want a rally breaker and any penalty this close to the goal line can do a thing like that. It'll be second down and seven back to the 10 yard line. Well, the crowd's really getting into it now. Art Monk in motion. And a fade pattern to Anthony Allen. He's pushed. 
and the penalty marker goes down. Anthony Allen was pushed by Roynell Young, and the Redskins will have a first and goal at the one-yard line. And Williams took quite a pop also in the backfield. Defense, passing the fans in the end zone. It's on a one-yard line. First down. First of all, let's look at the hit here from Seth Joyner. And then here's the pass interference all over of Roy Nell Young. Never saw where the ball was, had no other choice but to uh, interfere. Notice where the ball was thrown. Very good spot just inside the out-of-bounds line. So they went with the fade pattern, and it'll be first and goal at the one. Reggie Branch, short yardage blocker is in. Here's Jamie Morris, and Morris is stopped short of the goal line. It'll be second down. Wes Hopkins forcing the play. It's not easy to run against the Eagles and the Redskins. They're going to run it in. They're going to have to work awfully hard. Second and goal at the one, and the clock is running. 6.15 to go in the fourth quarter. Every second is precious here. Now, this is really where you need a big back. You only need a yard for the touchdown. What the Redskins got that play, they lost a yard. Now they need two to get in. Second and goal at the two. You see it from ground level. Here's Morris and a fake and a pass to Orr for the touchdown. A great fake in the line to Jamie Morris and Terry Orr wide open grabs the touchdown pass and the Redskins inch closer to the Philadelphia Eagles with under six minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Great fake to uh, Morris as you said Dick and now Orr number 87 who's in motion is just going to slip into the flat. Nice job by Williams of giving him a nice soft catchable pass but geez where again is the coverage on a receiver from the Eagle defense first touchdown reception of the year for Terry Orr and Loman will try to bring the Redskins to within two and he does 19 to 17 is our score remember that misconversion by Zendejas and the Redskins are two points behind Probably from that hit by Joyner. And was it Hopkins you saw in that pass to Allen when he was interfered with? Well, let's take a look because uh, he really did get his uh, uh, brains rattled a little bit. Yeah, Wes Hopkins gets in there also, and uh, that's a sandwich shot similar to when he got hurt in the first half. Low Miller will kick off, and Konechny and Walter Abercrombie are back for the Eagles. With Veteran Stadium in Philadelphia headed to an exciting finish. Eagles lead 19 to 17. This kick heading over toward Abercrombie at the 12. And he's hit hard at the 25. We've talked about the missed extra point by Lewis and Dejas of the Eagles. Keep in mind the Redskins missed a field goal on a muff snap. And if the field goal had been good and the extra point had been good, we'd have a tie game right now. Final score from the Meadowlands. The Giants win big over the Cardinals, 44 to 7. Putting pressure on the Eagles. They need a win to keep tied and in effect have the advantage over the Giants in a tiebreak. Hand off up the middle to Haddix. Michael Haddix with a quick opener picks up a first down to the 38 and a gain of 13. Well, we're going to see just how improved this new running attack is for the Eagles in this last situation in the ball game. This is where you got to have it not only to grind out yardage, but to take time off the clock. This is also where that 45-second clock comes into effect because now Cunningham will use all of it right down to about five seconds before he snaps the ball, but the key still is to run the ball effectively to take time off that clock. Winding down to five minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. First down, Eagles on their own 38. This time, it's Haddix again for a couple. And the stop made by Darrell Grant. In fact, yesterday when we talked to Ted Plum and the rest of the Eagles offensive people, they said that the biggest problem is that we can't run when we need to. When they have two minutes to go and they need the first down, that's where they have the most trouble running the ball. And that man right there is really the key because if they can't run the ball, then they're going to have to rely on him finding a receiver. 
The Eagles have rushed well overall today. They've gained 163 yards on the ground. Their season's average is 116. Second down and eight. Cunningham's pass incomplete. And Barry Wilburn nearly had a chance for an interception intended for Chris Carter. Why? Wow, uh, Randall Cunningham is very, very happy that ball wasn't picked up. A mistake and a poor decision on the throw because Wilburn had wonderful coverage on Carter. And let's not forget the bad decision that the Eagles offense made and Cunningham on that pass intercepted by Walton that set up the touchdown that brought the Redskins to within two. It'll be third down and eight on the Eagle 40. Cunningham has completed only one of his last six, including an interception. He has time, and there's Carter, and it's behind him, incomplete. Carter was open. And Gage, Steve Gage, and Barry Wilburn were back there defending, and that'll bring up fourth down. Well, the pressure is going to be firmly in the hands of the Eagle defense now to keep the Redskins from getting a field goal to win this ball game. We talked about pressure. Well, the Eagles are finding out what that pressure is and what it takes to become new champs in the NFC East. Anthony Allen goes deep and John Telchik. Got off a brilliant punt last time around. Over 50 yards. Gets off another beauty. Allen inside the 10. to about the 17-yard line, a 51-yard kick again by Telchik. Penalty marker is down. John Klingel made the special teams play for Philadelphia. Check the penalty out. Normally, it's illegal block against the receiving team. Illegal block, number 46. That's 10 yards. First down. Dennis Woodbury... And Doug Williams. One thing to keep in mind for uh, Low Miller and a possible winning field goal is he will be kicking into the wind. We've seen his uh, kickoffs in the second half when he has had to kick with the wind go well deep into the end zone. But when he's kicked to the other end of the field, they've come up about the 10-yard line. So it appears to be about a 15-mile, 15 15-yard 15 wind. Maybe uh, if you were playing golf today, a two-club win. A little too cold for that. Well, here, but uh, not where I'm going tomorrow. <laughs> Crowd into the game. First down, Redskins on their nine. <laughs> on a design rollout, Williams completes it to Art Monk. And Monk is down with the 19, close to the first down. Maybe short by a little. Terry Holt made the stop. Eric Allen is getting quite an education today. He couldn't cover Art Monk any closer than he does on this play. Williams is going to roll out to cut down the distance. The ball is in the air, throws a bullet there, but look how close Allen is to Monk. But Monk makes the grab and then dives forward close to the first down. Second down and one. Tampa Bay upsets Buffalo. Now a rollout right by Williams. He's gone deep for Terry Orr, and it's knocked down by Eric Allen. That'll bring up third down and one, so almost a free play, you might say, and here it is. Almost a free play, but almost an interception, too. This is a dangerous pass deep down the middle, and to a guy you wouldn't expect to get deep down the middle, Terry Orr. Nice job of deflecting the ball away, but watch where Eric Allen's left arm is. It's wrapped around Terry Orr's head as he punches it away with his right hand. Third down and one. 310 remaining. Jamie Morris will have the first down for the Redskins, and that's... Let's see, they have not blown it dead yet. Exactly. They did not blow it dead till Morris... Give him about 10 yards. Scrambled his way to the 28-yard line. Andre Waters makes the stop. Well, I guess instead of the big back, you get a guy that can sliver under people. Well, and never give up. That's the type of back Jamie Morris was at the University of Michigan. Made a lot of unbelievable runs, but this one 
is right in that category also. He never stops fighting, never goes down, never hears the whistle, and he's on his way. First and 10 at the 29. Mike Oliphant is in the backfield now for the Redskins. Great catch that time. Art Monk. And they only get a couple of yards out of that one to the 32. Seth Joyner making the stop. There's the time remaining. We're getting close to the two-minute warning. And keep in mind that the Redskins have only two timeouts remaining. Now they'll let it run down to that two-minute warning. But what we're seeing now is the effort of champions. The effort by Jamie Morris on the previous play. And then Art Monk making a grab here and never quitting, fighting for extra yards. And what about Doug Williams and the way he has played today? Great gutty performance. Two-minute warning is here, and the Philadelphia Eagles trying to cling to a two-point lead, 19 to 17. The Eagles have all three of their timeouts, but the Redskins, who have the ball, have two left. They'll have a second down and seven on their own 32-yard line. Chip Lowmiller, sure on the sidelines, is thinking of the possibility that he may be called upon to win a game. Doug Williams with a lot of time completes the pass. And a penalty marker is down. Ricky Sanders will have the first down if the penalty is against Philadelphia. Again, it appears that it's a personal foul penalty thrown late by the side judge there well after the uh, pass was uh, underway. So this will be another one of those tack-on calls. Get the completion, the yardage there. Defense holding. Then they're going to decline a penalty and take the first down. You saw Doug Williams running up the field, signaling and holding against the Eagles. There are the two coaches and the two sidelines, and the tension is obvious. First down for the Redskins on their own 42 with 152 remaining. Williams completes it to Sanders into Eagle territory, and it looks like close to another first down, and they may mark it about a yard short. Nine catches for 119 yards today for Ricky Sanders. Cincinnati gets in the playoffs, at least hosting a wild card. Timeout called by the Redskins. Hey, you wonder about this Eagle football team. Here they are. They got a chance to be uh, the NFC champs by winning their last three ball games. But today they've given up over 300 yards in passing to a team, uh, you know, that's pretty good at, at it. But still, if you're going to be the champ, you can't allow that to happen. They're allowing the Skins to get back in this ball game, and they're very much in danger of not only not winning this ball game, but no longer being in control of the situation in their own division. Second down and one at the 49-yard line of Philadelphia. Olafan gets hit, and Mike Pitts gets him for a loss. Back in Redskin territory to the 48. But it takes great players to come up with great plays. This time it was Reggie White who got in there right as the handoff was given to Oliphant who disrupted the play. Calling it at the line. Only one timeout left for the Redskins. And a completed pass to the 42-yard line. Ricky Sanders, another catch. And the Redskins hurry up again. Winding down to a minute remaining. The Eagles lead 19-17. Doug Williams has Monk, and Monk gets inside the 40-yard line, under a minute to play. The Redskins, who have made myriad of errors today at every phase of the game, and now the clock is stopped as Doug Williams fires the ball down as an incompletion with 43 seconds to go, and the Redskins are going to say to the Philadelphia Eagles here, if you want this division title, and want to knock off the defending Super Bowl champs, you're going to have to play tough down the stretch. Well, the Redskins are really showing a lot of class here today. Uh, this man, especially Doug Williams, he's the last guy that expected to be a factor in this ball game. Heck, he spent all day yesterday, one of the happiest moments a person can experience uh, as his wife gave birth to a new baby boy, 
and now he's in a, another one of the great competitive situations that he's famous for. Third down and seven at the 39. Williams pass is caught short of a first down by Mike Oliphant. Eric Allen prevented the first down. Clock is running. Williams is getting the play. Low Miller's longest field goal has been 46 yards as the Redskins now have to call their last timeout. So in order to try a 46-yarder, the Skins need to get to the 29. And right now they're at the 33-yard line. They call their last timeout with 28 seconds on the clock. I got to believe they got to get about 10 yards closer than that because of this wind that's coming right in his face. This is the area on the field where Zendejas missed a chip shot extra point. It's a very difficult place, especially for a kicker, knowing that the wind is there. Your mind starts to play games with you. You start thinking about playing the wind instead of playing just football and kicking the ball through the uprights. A lot of things can happen when you're kicking into that wind and you got a rookie kicker. Let's get him as close as possible. And I'm sure that's what Doug Williams just said to Joe Gibbs or vice versa. But before they do that, they've got to get the first down. And it'll be fourth down and one. Randall Cunningham leading the crowd. He's standing on top of the Eagle bench. And here is a fourth and one for the Redskins on the Eagle 33. It's enough for the first down, but the clock is running. Monk had it. The Redskins are out of timeouts. Williams trying to get him on the line of scrimmage so he can snap it and kill the clock with an incomplete pass. There it is. With 11 seconds to go, the ball is on the 26. And now Joe Gibbs has to make a decision. He has 11 seconds left. But unless they can get out of bounds with a pass closer to the goal line, he's risking having the clock run out before Lomont Lomiller can try a field goal into the win. Well, that's why you got head coaches. They make these decisions. Do we go for the field goal now? It appears so. But what a gutty call on fourth and one, going back to pass and throwing the ball. So here's Lomiller. He has kicked the 37-yarder. It'll be a 45-yard attempt. It's a fake. Coleman throws it away, but it's all be third down with six seconds to go. Well, did you see if Coleman had a chance to run out of bounds at all? But maybe not with only six seconds left. Well, you would think a guy could run 30 yards in six seconds, but I don't know about Greg Coleman. Another gutty call by the Redskins, but where's the receiver for Coleman to throw the ball to? Yeah, the Eagles had a defense there pretty well. Pretty smart call, but this is for all the marbles right now. 44-yard attempt, six seconds to go. The kick is long enough, and it's good. The kick is good, and the Redskins have taken a lead with one second to play. There is one second showing on the clock, but Chip Lomiller a 44-yard field goal and the Redskins have taken a lead over Buddy Ryan and the Eagles and Ryan is not going to wait for that one second. He's heading into the dressing room. Here it is again. Great kick, obviously. The Redskins showing that, hey, they may not be the champs this year, but they still have what it takes to be the champs. Considering all of the mistakes the Redskins have made today in every phase of the game, does Joe Gibbs want this game? Here's his reaction. And this veteran stadium crowd filing out is quiet and silent. The despair on the Eagles sideline. This, it's unbelievable to me that this man right here is not sticking around for the last second of this ball game. There are a lot of people looking up that tunnel to see if he's going to come back out. I don't think he realizes that this game is not over yet. And I got to go back to the play you talked about, the fourth and one when Doug Williams threw a pass for the first down to keep it going. And then following the fake, Low Miller makes good on a 44-yard field goal to give the Redskins a one-point lead. And if anybody had any 
any idea that Joe Gibbs is not a great football coach. He really showed it in the last drive for these winning points. He had that gutty call on fourth down, as you called. Also, the fake field goal on second down, where you have a chance to uh, either make the big play, but knowing that if you don't have it, it's not the end of the world. It's not the, the game's not over. Throw it away. Line up. Try the field goal when it really counts your last play of the ball game. Buddy Ryan left for the dressing room. You saw the tunnel. He has not come out. Low Miller will kick off. Keith Byers is the deep man, along with Chris Carter. Here's Low Miller. It bounces, and it's caught by Little. Lateral to connect me. Here's Carter. And there's a flip to Byers. Byers down the sideline, but that'll do it. Loose ball. The Redskins wind up with it. And it's Barry Wilburn who gets it as Low Miller's field goal wins the game for the Redskins. And if Joe Gibbs wanted to find out what his team was made of, with their fading playoff hopes about to disappear, he found out this afternoon. We also found out that the Eagles may not have the football team that they think they do. They may not be good enough to be the NFC champs. They right now are in a situation where now the New York Giants are in the driver's seat. Giants have a one-game lead in the division over Philadelphia. The final score is 20-19 Washington. 